Hi, everybody. It's episode 376 of PodQuest. Hey. hey. It's Wednesday, October 27th, 2021. I got the date right this time. <laughs> nice. Nice. I am Chris. getting it wrong? Uh, last week, I said Tuesday. I said Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. That's Druton's fault. Eh. I'll let it slide. Anyway, I'm Chris. With me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. Hey, I'm here. How you guys doing? Better this week. Well, you know, not too bad. I forgot to post on Instagram about stream for tonight, so I'm doing that real quick. That's fine. Nobody wants to watch it anyway, right? <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Look, I mean, your Metroid streams, I like. I didn't watch them watch them because I didn't have the sound on, but I enjoyed seeing like how somebody else that I knew played that game so incredibly different than I did, but uh, yeah. you just don't play any other games that I'm interested in, so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I um, and it's probably gonna change even more with uh, ports are coming out next week. I'm gonna do uh, I'm or in two weeks, seventh? No, it's not the seventh. Is it the seventh? Uh, the seventh uh, seems like a weird a day. That's a yeah. I was gonna say that's a Saturday or a Sunday. I forgot which. I had or no, that seventh, is a Sunday. That is a Sunday. I had the seventh in my in my uh in my head, but with Forza coming out, I'm gonna be playing a lot of Forza. Uh, I'm actually gonna get Games Pass then. Tried a bunch of stuff, but I mean, um, planning on doing instead of Metroid Mondays, Metroidvania Monday. It's uh um, available November 9th, so 9th. it'll be Tuesday. Yeah, uh, and so I'm probably going to do a lot of Forza Tuesdays and Fridays for Forza Fridays, and then Metroidvania Mondays, Retro Thursdays, and then maybe not do Wednesdays anymore. We'll see. Okay. Uh, do, do you have a plan on what other Metroidvanias you're going to dip your toe into? Uh, because I never beat it, I'm going to, uh, play, uh, Hollow Knight, um, and start that from the beginning. That's a Flash game, right? Uh, what? Oh, uh, never mind. Drew, I just realized Drew doesn't listen to Fire Escape, so he won't get that. Um, just, so, long story short, uh, Mary Kish on Fire Escape cast really likes the game Hollow Knight. Mm -hmm. Um, Dan really doesn't. He thinks it's a garbage game, um, and absolutely infuriates her on their show when he says it's a it's a browser game okay why does how do you not like hollow knight dan's a weird guy obviously uh um and then we'll go from there maybe do castlevania because it's in a title um i hear i've never played ori ori in the blind forest if i'm gonna have games pass i could definitely play that you know that's very metroidvania-esque it, 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 it's got all of the, the trappings of a Metroidvania. It's also gorgeous, and it has great music, and it's very hard at certain points. Like, some of the, you know, like, the escape sequence at the end of Dread? Uh, yeah. Um, so that happens, like, a bunch of times throughout Ori, and it's always incredibly difficult and will take you several tries to do. Mm -hmm. But, like, much like Metroid, it, it feels, it, it has that, like, you, you get a little further each time. Yeah. But yeah, there are a lot of good Metroidvanias out there. You should you should probably go try a Symphony of the Night if you've never beaten that, since that is the other half of the Metroidvania title. I I the only Castlevania I've ever played is NES Castlevania, so it's definitely on the radar. But and actually, so all of the other Castlevanias up to Symphony of the Night do not count towards the Metroidvania name. Um, Symphony of the Night is actually the reason that genre has that name. Yeah. So. I think that's, if it's not on Game Pass, it's definitely available on, like, Steam and Xbox and everything, so it's a, I, th I think it's, like, a $10 game anymore. Yeah, well, I'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, so, I don't know why we were talking, yeah, I just posted on Instagram, so we're good now. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we killed a little time. Rich, what's on the agenda tonight? On the agenda, uh, uh, Sony had a state of meh, and then, um, the, we had some Switch Online news that we didn't talk about last week. That is actually now live, so we can talk about it if we, any of us have it. Uh, then we're going to have our book club discussion for the first two volumes, which is the first six books or issues. It's of the first saga. twelve. First issues. twelve. First twelve. My bad. Of saga, um, and then I'm going to reveal my pick for book club, and it's going to be a little bit of an experiment. We'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, then me and Cobb, we both beat Metroid. Cobb, you played Doom, and uh, I, we're going to have. I watched Doom. the movie. You watched, Dune. You watched Dune. Sorry. Uh, I'm going really quick. And then, of course, we are going to have, well, not of course, we're going to have a discussion about Critical Role KP3 Episode 1. Yeah, that, that all sounds accurate to me, other than when you messed up what I, that I, I played Doom. I have played Doom, though. You weren't, you may have read that wrong, but at least you didn't lie. I have, in yeah. fact, played, <laughs> I've played Doom in the past. We only tell truths on this podcast. 
Uh, so, see, now now you're kind of walking that line. I mean, as far as I know, it was the truth. I, that's Anything that's I fair. Was true. That's fair. If you don't know it's a lie, it doesn't count. Exactly. That's uh, that's fair. But Rich, um, you were the yeah. only one out of the three of us that really gave a fuck about the state of play, apparently. And even then, you seemed like you didn't care about it. You just had some some things you'd yeah. like to say about it. I, I will say, uh, for the most part, uh, it was. I agree. It was meh. Um, I was interested to see that blood, uh, not not blood snacks, uh, bug snacks. Uh, Blood Snacks is the uh, crossover between Bloodborne <laughs> and Bug Snacks, uh, but Bug Snacks is going to get free DLC. Um, so that's that's a little neat. That's a little interesting. So that's that. Uh, uh, um, Star Ocean looked really cool, and I I like what we saw for the the the, the little devil devil inside. Is that what it's called? Um, but the really the only thing I wanted to say was I'm surprised we didn't see any uh, Death Loop. Oh no, we did. You missed it. I admit, I did, did, did they show Deathloop? I'm, no, I'm just I, fucking I'm, with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How funny would that be if they, like, had, like, some DLC for Deathloop that, like, the first state of play after Deathloop comes out, they're like, and here's some free content coming to Deathloop. Look, it's just not a state of play without Deathloop. So, yeah, like, were you I, okay? Were you okay by the end of that? It was, like, 20 minutes, there was no Deathloop, like, I, I did, did you go anything... look up some YouTube videos or something afterwards? <laughs> I didn't have anything to rage about, so that's why I'm a little off-center today, is because, like... I got in the mode of a state of play for Deathloop, and to be raged about Deathloop, there was nothing, so I didn't have anything to be raged about. I Now I really genuinely hope that at some point in the next, like, six to eight months, they have a state of play, and one of the things that they spend, like, too many minutes on is, like, DLC for Deathloop. Please do. Please. I hope. I hope I hope we just get Deathloop all the Like, even in the sizzle reels, or, like, in the opening, like, I like cinematic, I don't know. Uh, opening cuts of whatever's going on, they show Deathloop in there. Like, we just need Deathloop in a state of play. Just Otherwise, all the time. Deathloop everywhere. It's, yeah, like, it, it's the, it's the age-old question. If a tree falls and there is no one there, does it, does it make a sound? Is, is it a state of play if there's no Deathloop? I think in this case it is, but it, it is lesser for it. Exactly. But, you know what? I, I would take more Deathloop. That game is really fucking good. Says <laughs> you and, like, Deathloop. everybody else on the internet, but, like, no. Ah, I would I would have loved if they announced Deathloop DLC. I'd have gone and bought it immediately. I look, I wouldn't have been surprised if there was Deathloop DLC based on on how this has been uh, how how the game has been received. I wouldn't have been surprised. I'm sure there something's coming. Yeah. But like, I imagine it was definitely a wait and see kind of how the game did to see if they're going to actually do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the one thing that makes me want like unless it's already contracted that they're gonna that they would do dlc um it's it's a bethesda game which means it's a microsoft game but it's a sony exclusive. timed console exclusive i think i think yeah. i think it, they've got like a year or two exclusivity on it so like hmm. do they do dlc like excuse me is that part of the contract already That's I, can, fair. I, I, I could see like if it wasn't already contracted maybe microsoft doesn't do it so that they can focus well that was arcane right yeah so that Arcane can then focus on on something on their platform um, to maybe ride the high of how much people liked Deathloop. But at the same time, like by the time Arcane had a new game ready, like people are going to have forgotten about Deathloop. Look, I think this is enough talk about Deathloop for, in a state of play that it wasn't <laughs> even in. So, look, you wanted to talk about the state of play, which means we're talking about Deathloop. I know, I know, I made that mistake myself. But... Drew, would you like to tell us all about Deathloop again from the from the beginning? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Rich, just just sit back and listen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my headphones off and go cook dinner. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, do you guys want to talk about some of the Nintendo Switch stuff from last week? Yeah, let's get into it. Right. So last week they had it. W- it was an Animal Crossing direct, I believe. Uh, yes. Uh, they did have an Animal Crossing direct, which I did not watch. I didn't uh, watch I it either. Completely forgot about it. The only really thing I knew about. Like, last week, or it was, yeah, it was last week's announcements, like, Tuesday, I believe it was, forgot to talk about it on the po- on the podcast, was they released the pricing information for the Switch Online, for the expansion right. pack. So, they re- right, right, because the, they hadn't released the pricing information that, up to that point. So, they released that yeah. as, like, a, a long side, the, yeah. the Animal Crossing Direct. Um, so, the Animal Crossing Direct basically revealed that there's going to be paid DLC for Animal Crossing. It's uh, $25, um... It, it gives you the ability to 
do like home creator stuff for your your island residents among other things like there's some other stuff there's also a free update that's gonna i think the free update is what includes the the cafe and some other stuff yeah. uh i i i meant to go in and actually look this up because I, I heard two varying reports i'm not sure if altogether this is the final content for Animal Crossing, or if this is just the final free content and they may do further paid DLC. But either way, this is going to be the last free update for Animal Crossing uh, New Horizon. Uh, yes and no. Um, because if you get the Nintendo Expansion Pass, you get the update for free for Animal Crossing. Yes, but it's still part of a paid DLC bundle. So it's not necessarily free because you're paying for the Expansion Pass. <laughs> Yeah, true, true, but it's, I'm just, like, it's yes, because, it, it, like, the expansion pass is more than just the the DLC, it's the N64 emulator, it's the Genesis emulator, which those are both going to be being updated as well, so it's, like, it's yes, it's the last free update, but also, no, it's not the last free update, because, technically, like, who knows, maybe, maybe more Animal Crossing updates, if you have the expansion is going to be free, and you have to pay for it if you don't have the expansion. Like, no, exa- that's and that's what I meant. Like, uh, I am not a hundred percent sure if the the free update, the one that isn't part of either paid DLC or expansion pass, is like the last non expand like DLC related update, or if um if they're just this is it and like there's no more Animal Crossing content coming. I, I feel like it would make sense for them to, to do more like paid content, whether it's DLC that you get free with the expansion pass or something because it's a good way to keep the game going without having to make a brand new one and continue to make money off of it. But Nintendo makes weird decisions sometimes when it comes to like online service sort of stuff and and how long a game goes for. I, I would be surprised if they like stopped supporting it now after the new version. Like it's a new version. It's like Animal Crossing 2.0 is what they're t- titling it, I believe. Like they, I would be totally surprised if they don't continue to support this beyond here. Um, so there will most definitely be updates. But I agree with you with the question of whether or not it is free. Uh, it, I, it depends on maybe how well the expansion pass does or uh, just how they're going to do it. Maybe I'm hoping if it continues to be free, it's because they're rolling it into the expansion pass because I have an expansion. I, I got the expansion. All right. Well, we'll get to the expansion in a second. Um, but... The way that things were worded, this is definitely the last bit of, this is the last free content update. Like, wholly free does not require any other subscription or payment. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I agree with you though. Like, I think it'd be crazy for them to release $25 DLC and then not maybe do another DLC in another year or eight months or something I, like that. I, and it even could be you need to get the $25 DLC to get the free updates. Be- like, like I, I just I have to rewatch I have to watch this the the the, the uh, direct I completely forgot about the direct. Yeah, I meant to actually go back and like read up on on that bit because it apparently just wasn't it wasn't said very clearly in the direct because there are these two different channels for content now between the paid and the not paid. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as that, like that's cool. Like Animal Crossing was a very good time for like. 11 months like i or i guess it wasn't even quite 11 months but like i had a lot of fun with it i played rich i know you played it drew i don't think you ever played it but sarah did i uh, yeah sarah played it for a while i have never played on animal crossing ever yeah you probably wouldn't enjoy it not until they add like a oh no no they do they have wrestling rings like you oh, can make I'm a there. wrestling ring i, I do saw, saw that when Animal Crossing was big, super big for, like, the three months it was super big. Like, you could totally make, like, your own, like, AEW arena in, like, a, the basement of the house and invite people over to, like, watch other things, do silly stuff. It sure. could happen. You could do it. Well, do, can I, you still play NES games inside of it? No. No, no they, I don't they, care. <laughs> I don't think you've been able to do that since, since like, the, the original GameCube. Animal Crossing? Yeah. Or, well, the first one out here. Well, I mean, there's the why would they give you that available that that option to be able to do it when they could make money doing having you do it through other means? Like why back the, not? Back in exactly. the GameCube, back in the GameCube, it was you get the game, and that was one of the things that you could get for playing a game is the ability to play old games. But now they're charging you for the Switch Online, so it's like, well, if people are playing this, 
if they have access to this, they don't really have a reason to have Switch Online, so why would we give them the ability to play these games for free when you already pay? It's a capitalism. I mean, you're not wrong, but it's still, it's just one of those things where it would be nice. I mean, it would be nice if that game had launched with more stuff to do at the end game, and that's the problem, is after, after, like, what, I, I think I stopped in, uh... I think I stopped around October, November when I stopped playing because there's nothing for me to do and swimming sucked. I never got this. I never saw fall or winter. In, yeah, in I was going to say that game seemed like it fizzled out by the end of summer last year. It was like early fall. Like all of yeah. us kind of fell off like in November. A few people like stuck around for a little while. Um, like, I know just from having looked at like friends stuff on the Switch, um, Jess, uh, Papa's fiance. Um, she's got like fifteen hundred hours in it, so like she still plays yeah. occasionally. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of people that still play it. It's just I I, I it, the mainstream it did kind of die out a bit, but like with the continued um support that they got from Nintendo and updates, like people would still go back to play it to get the new stuff. There were those people that were collectors to collect everything. I was yeah. collecting all the clothes, and then. Ran out of storage space. So. Yeah, the the combination of the the limited storage space and the RNG ness of being able to get stuff and not really having any control over being able to just try again, like for the certain items that you either just had to wait a full day for it for your shop to refresh, yeah. or wait to find a balloon and hope it happened to fall out of a balloon or from shaking a tree. Yeah, um, that made it very just unsatisfying to try and collect objects. Because then it's like, all right, well, I can go in the Nookazon and probably pay somebody too much in Nook Miles tickets for this item. Um, but it's going to take forever to, like, travel, get it, come back, all that fun stuff. Yeah. And then, like, you come back and you're out of storage. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but yeah, I think... It's... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think with the new the new content, like the paid content, uh, that's at least adding more to do. Yeah. All the free updates didn't add a whole lot to do. Yeah, it mostly just added items to get and to to find and and ways to like new ways to edit your um your island. Whereas like this is actually giving like there's farming and shit like that now that like I'm interested and I'm gonna go back and try it. Uh, hopefully the farming isn't like the fucking plants and getting the blue goddamn roses and shit. But like who knows? But I I, I definitely do want to give it a try when when it's released, which I. I don't think it's ready yet. I think it's soon. I, I think it's like the first week in November or something like that. I honestly did not double check that before we started either. I didn't realize we were going to talk about Animal Crossing so much. Uh, yeah. I will. Say, I, I did hear on another podcast, though, as far as Animal Crossing is concerned. Uh, so th they changed it up where your your villagers won't leave if you don't allow them to. I think you knew that already. Um, but when you go back after a very long gap, um, they, will, they will acknowledge how long you've been gone for. So, like, they'll say, like... Oh, I haven't seen you in eleven months. Um, yeah. The last time we talked, I hadn't showered and I was a little stinky. And I'm sorry, I'll never let that happen again. Yeah, they've they've had that in there. See, I've never actually like left the game and then come back after a long period of time like that. Usually, when I stop playing anim in Animal Crossing, like I'm kind of that I don't go back to it. There were people I saw videos on YouTube. People uh, would time travel a year and uh, oh. see what would happen. Right, I forgot about time traveling. That does... That makes it less fun, I'm going to be yeah. honest with you. It does. Like, naturally, my villagers are going to be like, Oh, hey, how have you been? It's been a year. It's probably been about a year. Maybe more. Because I think it is technically fall on Animal Crossing. Uh, I believe it would be, yeah. But I guess, on to the expansion pass for Switch Online. Mm -hmm. So, it is... Correct me if I'm wrong... It is $50 a year for a single person, $80 a year for a family of up to eight. Yes. And then, I don't know if you, if you own your family plan or not, Rich, but you, you do get some sort of pro rate if you get the expansion pass now. Like, I was looking, because I have a family plan already, I would just pay $50 to upgrade, I believe, instead of the full amount, because I just renewed. Yeah, and that's the same with me. I just renewed in the beginning of October, and so I got the family plan for 50 bucks, but I never charged everyone on my family plan from before because I knew this update was coming. So it's just going to wait to get it all. So it's, I have a full family plan. It's costing us each 10 bucks to have the expansion, which at that point, like a hundred percent worth it. Yeah. Um, for a single person, $50, probably not worth it. And I, I, 
It depends, though, because are they going to get the Animal Crossing DLC? I, I, and that, the, I was going to say, that is kind of the kicker there. If you're going to spend the $25 for Animal Crossing, then yeah, like, doing the upgrade, why not? Like, at that point, like, it's not that much more. You'll get the extra games out of it. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, here's the thing, though. It's how much do they know for a fact they want to continue playing Genesis and N64 games down the line versus wanting the Animal Crossing DLC? Because if they decide they don't want the expansion pass anymore, they lose the DLC. Yeah, but if they pay for a year, they have it for at least a year, and then goes from there. Like That is a valid argument, though, Drew. Like, you're right. Yeah. If If people have no interest in the other, like, the N64 and Sega stuff, then, yeah, I, it, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I looked at the games on those. It's terrible. It's so bad. <laughs> There's, like, three games worth playing across the two systems. That is, that's exactly the same thing that they did with the NES and SNES, and it's, like, every few months they add a couple more, and it's usually, like, here's one, like, first-party game that people, like, fondly remember, and then here's, like, two or three games that you've actually never heard of before, and are probably not good, but still, like, they're classic games, like, check them out. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the Genesis games, and you got Sonic 2, you got Echo the Dolphin, um, Golden Axe wasn't bad, I enjoyed Golden Axe, I played But no Axe. Altered Beasts, there's no Altered Beasts, there's no Alex Kidd, what the fuck yeah. are they doing over there? Not, look, I'm hoping they get Vector Man, I'm like, my, my fingers are crossed for fucking Vector Man, but, I mean, it's not, they don't have it right now, and for the 64, you got Mario Tennis, Mario... 64, uh, Mario Kart 64, Star Fox 64, Yoshi's Story. There's so many people excited for Yoshi's Story. Is Mario 64 on there? I forget. Mario 64 is on there, yes. I'm surprised that they put that on there. Because, oh, well, no, you know what? Well, it was a limited release. Never yeah, mind. You can't buy that other thing anymore. Yeah, yeah. never mind. I take that back. Yeah. Um, also, Sin and Punishment was a really good game. So, funny you mentioned that. I'm going to jump ahead to, to this real quick. Um, people have been finding a bunch of problems with the emulation uh, some of them are like minor to to like people like us where it's like input lag and and frame rate well frame rate stuff's not minor but input lag issues for like people that want to do like speed running or that like are very specific about how they play that stuff yeah. um because the controls are set up how they are and you cannot change them for sin and punishment it is impossible to shoot and move at the same time hmm. wow and because they don't allow you... So, I sent that thing to you guys yesterday, like, how the button mappings work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's... That sucks. Like, it's it's very weird button mapping. I understand, like, the N64 controller was a a, a weird controller. Like, it's, it's not a great controller to begin with. And they had to come up with some sort of functionality for, like, how they wanted to default map it. Mm -hmm. You need to give people the ability to remap those buttons, though. Uh, um, well... You can remap the buttons for all the games at once and then have to go back and change it every time you want to play a different game with a different button layout. Are you sure? Cause I, or do you that, mean for the at the console level? It, well, yeah, at the console level, I guess it would just apply to everything and not just like specifically within that app. But yeah, like, yeah, you can console level remap buttons and make it work, but then you have to go back and change it. Like, it's a term. It is not a reasonable uh, solution. Just in general, like not just this game, like all games, not having the ability to remap controls is bad design. Like there are for us, like like we are all able bodied people. Like we, we don't have any issues with with like our fingers or, or response time for anybody that is disabled. Like they can't play those games if if they can't get around those controls. And, like, even just for people that, that, that don't have any disability, that, like, maybe they're just not good at using, like, the triggers for something, and they, they prefer to map those down to a button. Like, let people fucking do that. Why do, why is that so hard? <laughs> well, because they couldn't even figure out how to emulate the fucking controller pack into the fucking thing either, so... Yeah, I mean, that's that's the other thing. So, Rich, I don't know if, if you've seen this. It probably doesn't matter to you. I know it wouldn't necessarily matter to me. But on Mario Kart 64... Because the emulator doesn't support, um, like, the save pack, basically, yeah. you cannot save Ghost Driver data to, nice. like, like Ghost Race against. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, I, I don't care about it. I'm sure you don't care about it. But there are people that were looking forward to that, that, like, yeah. they can't do it now because Ninten Nintendo's emulator for this is actually weaker 
than like the hobbyist emulators out there for Nintendo 64. Like it, it has yeah. less functionality than what a bunch of like people did for free just to be able to play these games on their PC. Mm-hmm. And that's a bummer. That's a real yeah, bummer. It is. And I'm, I'm hoping they, they, they work on it. I'm hoping they make it better. Like it just launched like with everything you, you guys, ev- you guys not saying you, you guys as in the general public, uh, give Bethesda a benefit of the doubt and give Nintendo a benefit. Like, Bethesda releases broken things all the time, and you still buy shit from them, and they generally fix it over time. At any time there's been an issue with Nintendo stuff, it's been fixed. I don't know, they, they never fixed all the issues with Mario All-Star, 3D All-Stars. What were the issues with Mario 3D All-Stars? I, it's poor emulation, just like this stuff, and the inability to remap your controls. Unless they did update that. Maybe they I did. I thought they gave you the ability to remap controls. I thought they didn't. I'll have to load that game up later and check, because you might be right. But it was still, it was bad emulation. Like, there were a lot of just emulation problems on those games. Because, like, unfortunately, Nintendo took, and rightfully so, because, like, they don't want their shit stolen, um, they took a very strict stance against emulation and ROMs. So now, when it comes to doing this stuff, they're having to try and figure out how to build their own emulators and ROMs, rather than being able to go out and license some of the ones that are not um, illegal. But the, the the thing is, uh, like they're trying to protect themselves from their things getting stolen. I'm watching videos on YouTube of uh, speedrunners playing um, Metroid Dread on fucking emulators modded. Yeah, like people are already doing it. They're doing it so. Fa- Eric plays my brother. Eric plays um, Breath of the Wild modded on his PC. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. We talked about this last. I think it was last week or the week before that. The day Metroid Dread came out. Kotaku posted an article, like, low-key encouraging people to go emulate the game because it ran better. Yeah. To the point where, like, they had to include, like, an editor's note at the bottom of, well, we didn't really mean it that way. We think our readers are adults and know better as, like, a like a get out of jail for them. And it was just, it was super shitty and just, it, yeah. And a bunch of other outlets picked up on it and... Yeah, that whole thing is just insane. <laughs> yeah. It's... Uh, so they never let you remap controls in Mario 3D All-Stars, but they did eventually patch in the ability to put inverted camera in. Okay. That's the only change they yeah. seemingly ever made. Yeah, and because Nintendo doesn't really patch stuff like that too often. Um, because it is like, it's an older game, so they do have the excuse of like, well, this is how it worked. Only in a lot of cases, like, they're not emulated well, so they actually don't work as well. Mm-hmm. Like, like I was saying before, there was a, there was actually a list somewhere of all of sort of the, the more minor issues that people found with, um, with games. And a lot of it was like frame rate and input lag and actually the way the game is being displayed on, um, for like Ocarina of Time and stuff like that, where other PC emulators don't have any of these issues. But what Nintendo built does, because they're not going out and using other people's, they're not licensing other ideas. They're just trying to put it together themselves. Mm-hmm. But I, again, Rich, I think you getting to spend ten dollars for it ha- makes a hundred percent sense. Like, yeah, like yeah, that's that's a no brainer. Like for me, it's like it's it's me and Erica, and then Drew. I think you and Sarah are both on ours, right? Yeah, but like right now, like. Sarah added Erica to your uh, Spotify thing. So, like, I'm not going to make you guys pay me extra money for Switch Online when Erica is not giving Sarah extra money for Spotify. So, it's like, if I wanted to upgrade the Switch because I know you don't give a fuck about it, like, that's just 80 bucks out of my pocket. Because Erica also doesn't care about it. (laughs) I'd be the only one, probably, to try those games. And until they add some more Sega games so I can see if, like, those are worth it, it's just not worth it for me. Yeah, I I got into an argument with uh, someone online uh, that was bitching about the sixty four, uh, uh, bitching about the 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 uh, expansion pass. And his biggest problem was there's no good games on the N sixty four, so why would I get this? And then I'm like, well, then obviously this isn't for you, and you were dead set on not getting it to begin with. Like you can wait until something else comes out that you're ready for, like. You don't have to get it right away. And they're not forcing it either. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's an expansion. For now. Like, oh, no, they're not going to force it, though. I they're don't not. know. They're I don't gonna... know. 
They're not going to turn around and say, you need the expansion pass to play online. now. They're not going to do that. Like, that's what the Switch Online is. This is an expansion pass. Maybe when we get, hopefully not, but maybe when we get Game Boy, it'll be $10 more for fan. Like, who knows? But, like, right now, they're not going to say, you need this to play online. And you don't need it for anything else except to play these emulations. The 64, the Genesis, and to get the Animal Crossing DLC without having to pay. But so, I think that's, that's wherein lies the problem. If you've never played Animal Crossing, like if you don't own Animal Crossing or don't want that DLC, you're spending more than double the cost of the base subscription for, what, a dozen mediocre games? Yeah, so then don't get it right away. No, That's no, my I, point, though. I agree with you, but like, I think that's where it... I would not be surprised, just like Drew was alluding to, if in a year or in two years... They get away with the expansion pass portion of it, and they just go, hey, we're just rolling this into one thing. It's just you get everything for $80. Because mm-hmm. that's that's on par. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's on par with um, PlayStation Plus and um, Xbox Live at that point. Um, and whereas, like, PlayStation Plus and Xbox, you get, like, you get those specific free games for that month that are then just yours indefinitely. Nintendo is doing the alternate route of like, well, here's just a library of old games that we will just occasionally add to. So like in their mind, it's probably like it's a, it's an equal value for for the most part. I, I want to pick teeth with that occasionally. It's quarterly. Is it? Qu- I, I didn't realize it was it regularly is, like it's, that. It's, uh, yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> it's, it's as as far as I can remember, it's pretty much every three months they have a couple of updates. They I know for a games. while it was more frequently. Like they were releasing games like every like two or three weeks, maybe every month or so. But then it did slow down. I didn't realize it was quarterly now. It, it's it as far like I said as much as far as I can remember, it seems to be quarterly that they release new things for the the system, which is good. Th- that is good. Here's the problem: the N64 already has all five good games it has that will ever show up on that on it so majora's mask isn't there majora's mask isn't good golden eye won't be on there a hundred percent golden eye will never be on there microsoft owns the that stuff now and just ridiculousness with the licensing oh yeah that's too. i didn't think about that didn't they have to change one of the james bond games because of that uh i believe so yeah like Uh, because 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 of likenesses or something like that probably and if you want to give me the argument Perfect Dark, okay, maybe. I don't know that Perfect Dark will get on there, though. It being, again, that's owned by Microsoft, so, like, maybe, maybe not. Banjo-Kazooie? Like, owned by Microsoft. Microsoft owns Rare. That's yeah, a, but, like, I mean, Nintendo has been working with Microsoft a lot. Sure, they have. but why would, why would Microsoft just put that on there when they could, like, more likely convince the, uh, Nintendo, hey, we're going to sell a version of it. Slash, they already sell versions of it on the Xbox. Like, so th- they could do, what? they could actually do that because there's the rare replay, which has the Banjo Kazooie games, has Perfect Dark, like it has all of those games in one package yeah. that they could, similar to Ori in the Blind Forest, release on other consoles. But I, I don't agree with Drew on the all, all the good games are there. Like, there are some other good games on N64. Um, they might not play well anymore. Because that that era of gaming just didn't age well, but oh, there are Doom there were still 64. good games. Doom sixty four again. Microsoft owns that. <laughs> oh shit, they do. Fuck. Also, also, you can already buy it on the on the Switch. I'm pretty sure. Can you buy Doom sixty four on there? I know you can buy Doom like the the original PC version. I'm pretty sure they put out. I know they put out Doom sixty four. I'm pretty sure you can buy Doom sixty four on the PlayStation. I think you might be right, actually. And I think what we've learned here is that all of Richie's favorite N64 games are Microsoft owned now. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you, can, I, you can buy Doom 64 on the Switch. Look, I, I didn't have, I, I never played Doom 64. I'm just going through a list of uh, Nintendo 64 games. Like I literally just did Nintendo 64. Games. <laughs> it's and five bucks. Going through an alphabetical list. Uh, I got to um, what was uh, F Zero X. Okay. Uh, oh. Okay, F Zero is one that's not on on there right now that people like. Oh, Donkey Kong sixty four, the Kong worst 64. of the Donkey Kong games. Um, let's see, I'm 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 in Harvest Moon sixty four, Kirby sixty four. Hey you Pikachu, does Pokemon the Stadium? I mean, state. I was thinking Stadium. 
Does the does the Switch have a microphone the way the DS did? No, I don't think so. Switch then, does not have a microphone at all. Oh, that sucks because that that but they have their phone app, so don't. They, oh, you're right. They yeah, but the, it's just emulators. They wouldn't do that. But they could totally release a new version of that game on the Switch, and people would fucking buy it like crazy. Here we go. Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. What? What is that game? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's just in the eyes. Um, <laughs> it came out in uh, 11-23-99. Um, oh, man, it just looks terrible. Plot, the story of the game is yeah. set in 1947. It depicts archaeologist and adventurer Indiana Jones returning to his digging career after his involvement in World War II. Uh, an old friend of Jones and a member of the Central Intelligence Agency visits him at his dig site and informs him the Soviets are excavating the ruins of Babylon. I don't know, man. Majora's Mask. They just need to put that on there. I mean, I mean that'll be on there. Majora's... Whatever. Majora's Mask will be on there. Yeah, I'm sure... That, I, I believe there was a Kirby game. No. Yeah, Kirby uh, 64. Yeah. It's like Kirby uh, 64. something of the shards. The crystal shards. Yeah, there we go. I was close. Something of the shards. I, I had the word shards in there. There's also Castlevania 64. That yeah, was a I thing, passed, wasn't it? I passed. There, it was. It was it wasn't there. that an abomination? Like, Mortal Kombat um, Anthology four. Sub-Zero. Look, here we go. Mario Party. Mario Party 2. The, Mario they're, Party they, 3. They, they just put out a thing that is the the Mario Party 1 and 2 like remastered, basically. Actually, Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. That would actually be a really smart one to add, to add on there. People to go back and see the original Smash Brothers, and then that will make them want to buy the new one that won't play like a game from 1999. I got it. I got it. I got it. This is what's going to get you to get it. Mega Man 64, also known as Mega Man Legends. Actually, the Mega Man Legend games, as far as I know, are actually pretty good, aren't they? They were great. They were, like, kind of, like, a cross between RPG and Metroidvania type of Mega Man. It was very different. That's what I... I, I thought they were more RPG than, like, platforming action, yeah. like a Mega Man game usually is. Yeah. Um, let's see. Namco Museum 64? I, I, that's a joke. I know that. I, f- I, I feel like there's already six other Namco museums on the Switch, too. <laughs> yeah. There was a Neon Genesis Evangelion game? Only in Japan. You know it's what? okay. There's Japanese only games S- already S- on the SNES stuff. And Sin NES and Punishment stuff. was Japanese only until it was released on the Wii. Oh, actually, did you guys see that there is. I forget exactly what it was, but one of the N64 games can't do a thing. Unless you change your game to the Japanese, unless you change your console to the Japanese region uh, uh, and download that version. Mario 64 has no rumble. That's it. Thank you. I mean, which one is not game, a big deal. One of the games that like, you can't save minus, I mean, it's got the save states, but if you like the, the in-game save does not work. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> because Because they didn't put in the controller pack and there was no on-battery save for that game because it would have made the friggin cartridge insanely expensive back in the day so the only way to save was on a controller pack and you there are no controller packs in the emulator hopefully they do they do patch that in so that they because there were a couple of games that you you had to save to the pack and like that would suck if like you just have to always remember to do a save state not the end of the world it's just a bummer I naturally do a save state even in a game that saves. Like I just always did that when I when I play on those. So I like have a big deal. For yeah, me. I do do save states also, but I I like do the saves in the game too. So like if you die, you just start where your last save was in case you haven't made a save state in a while. Mm-hmm. Like I tend to make save states um like when I'm done playing, not like in the middle of it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars: Shadow of the Empire. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. They're not going to get any of the Star Wars games. They're not going to get anything licensed because those licenses are fucking ridiculous to work around. But right, it would be pretty fine. cool if Rogue Squadron went up there. Sure. Superman 64. <laughs> I said I don't good think games. D- I don't think DC would let them put that out there. I don't I don't think DC <laughs> wants to remember that. If if they're putting Superman 64 on there, they have to pay us all 5 bucks. <laughs> oh man. But have you played any of the, the 64 games yet, Rich? No, I just got it late last night. Um, I wasn't planning on playing 64 probably until later this weekend. Uh, I'm definitely going to be playing Genesis tomorrow on stream uh, for Retro Mondays. Or Retro Go play Thursdays, some Sonic, this, so- Sonic the Hedgehog? Probably some Sonic 2, yeah. Um, 
Uh, probably for a little bit. I, I've learned with Retro Thursdays, I can really only play a spe- any single retro game for about an hour before I start to get bored. Um, with the exception of the Metroid games, like, I played Kirby for about an hour last week, and I was like, all right, I need to play something. Kirby's also a very easy game. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there's not a lot of challenge to Kirby's adventure on the NES. Yeah. But, yeah, like, Mar- I, I saw you play Mario World. Uh, no offense, you're not good at Mario World. I'm uh, not good at platformers. I mean, at least you know that. Like, yeah, yeah, that was that was rough to watch. I'm just like, man, if if I could only like speak to you and tell you like, hey, do this instead. See, here's the thing. Uh, a, I don't know any of the secrets, and B, the reason I'm not good at platformers, especially Mario, is I'm not someone who moves slow, and so you I fucking tend- always run, always run. I know, <laughs> I know. That's all I do is hold the run button. But I also like second guess and doubt myself in most platformers. And, like, move back and forth while in the air, not knowing if it's the right jump or not. And I'm just, I'm not, I, I like, tense up a lot when I'm playing platformers because I don't know if the move I'm making is right and then it ends up being wrong because I hesitate. It's that and social it's, anxiety. Yeah, it's just. Um, if you if you ever go back to Mario, like Mario World in particular, that game is designed in such a fantastic way where if you jump at full speed, you're likely going to land where you need to land. Um, like, Mario 2 The Lost Levels is a game that is just a big fuck you to players where if you can't see where you're supposed to land, you just have to jump and hope that you have enough speed to get to the other side. Um, Mario World is like a, oh yeah, if you just jump, odds are you're going to land on something. There, There's one, I don't think you got to it, because I think it's, you got to the level with all the souls and stuff, like on the bridge, right? I don't remember. Um, um, after Vanilla Dome. I think you got. I think I saw that you got past the castle in Vanilla Dome. I, I made it through the cave. So I forget if it's on the top level of the bridge or the bottom level of the bridge. But um, one of those levels, um, it's got like all the saws going up and down on like the the wires back and forth. If you go into that level with a cape and Yoshi, the the level starts out with just like like a long stretch of just flat ground. You can run, jump, fly across most of the level. And then every time you start to come down with Yoshi, he will bounce off of the saw. It 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 is just timed perfectly to do that all the way to the end. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it, there's no like, you don't have to go backwards and forwards and like try to like aim your landing. It's just as long as you're moving forward, you will hit those things exactly as you start to fall to them. Yeah, but even even as much as I know that, I'm still gonna second guess my jumps and landings. It's just no, I I, I totally understand. I was just saying, like that game is so it. Mario World is such a well-designed game for that stuff. Yeah. But I guess, do you guys want to move on to a uh, saga? Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. So yeah, so, so this, uh, this week's book club, as we, we mentioned before, is the first two volumes of the 2012 comic series saga by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I'm a big fan of it. What did you guys think? I, I enjoyed it. I, um, I'm probably going to try to read what's left of it. Like, what is there, like, how many volumes are there? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. There are 54 current issues. The 55th issue comes out in January after, like, a three-year hiatus. Um, there is, on Comixology, there's a, um, an omnibus of the first 54 issues. That's, like, 40 bucks or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we have the Comixology thing for a couple of weeks, right? Or... So, com- not everything is available for free on Comixology. Um, if you look, if you go to like Saga, for instance, it's the first three volumes are included with Comixology Unlimited, but everything else gets discounted. So yeah. you can go buy the Omnibus for like, I think it's like 10 or 15% off, which is far cheaper than trying to buy it like at full price. Yeah. Um, and it's a hundred percent worth it. it. I'm actually thinking about buying the digital Omnibus just so I don't have to dig out my physical books to reread it. Um, but Drew, what did you think? I enjoyed it. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to continue with it or not, though. I'm not surprised there. I kind of thought out of the two of you that Richie would be more interested in continuing, and you'd kind of be like, hey, it was good, but uh, but I have enough. Yeah, although, like, where issue 12 left off, I'm like, god damn it, like, how how do they get from out of there? Yep. Like, and, yeah, right, like, so- god damn it, Cobb leaving it on a mega cliffhanger spot so here's the shitty part about saga that's how every chapter like every arc ends like that um i think i mentioned this when i when i when i chose this 
but the way Saga ran for a long time, and I don't know the exact issue numbers, but they would basically do like an arc of, let's say, like 12 issues, and then they would take a three to four month hiatus, and then they would come back and do monthly books again for, you know, another 12 issues or what have you, and then take another three to four month break. So whenever they were getting up to one of those long breaks, the last issue would always be like a big cliffhanger like that. Um, like early earlier in in the trade, there's the issue that ends with um the Will's ship being shot and Lion Cat getting ejected from it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you're kind of left with the uh, oh Lion Cat died, and it's a bummer because that's such a cool fucking character, mm-hmm. like a cat that just knows if you're lying. Um, I th- I don't think that was a long gap, but it was still a that it that happens, and then you have to wait a month to find out what happens next. Yeah. And that book is very good about just leaving you on a cliffhanger so that you want to go back and see what happens next. Yeah, it's it's definitely a very interesting setting, uh, like this, like combination fantasy sci-fi or yeah, fantasy sci-fi setting, um, and an endless war. Like, there's there's plenty of media out there that has an endless war, but this one where it's like at this point they just don't understand what they're fighting against any or fighting for anymore, and they're they're just. They're not fighting on their home planets because it was causing too much destruction. So they're now assholes and fighting on other planets. Yeah, they're, they're, they they took their war intergalactic and other empires are backing us different sides of it. Yeah, and, and for the most part, no one understands why. It's just, it is what it is. It's it's how you live life now. Yeah, yeah, the people on Landfall hate the people from Wreath, and the people on Wreath hate the people on Landfall for no particular reason. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and I... Writing, writing is well done. The the art is very interesting. I like. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if uh, Cobb, you probably noticed it. I don't know if Drew noticed it. Whenever the robots talk, and specifically uh, Prince Prince Robot the Fourth, um, his dialogue is written out different than humans or than like regular organic people. You mean like the lettering itself? Yeah, yeah. the lettering. It was yeah. in like Courier New. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No- so a lot of comic books do that sort of thing. Um, depending on like the like the type of book, they'll it'll either be like a different font type. Um, there are actually mm-hmm. characters later on in in Saga that their planet is primarily underwater, so all of their dialogue is in like if I remember correctly, it's green bubbles with like blue lettering or something like that. But it's all more of like thought bubble instead of like that just um regular circle bubble. Yeah. Because they're underwater, so they're probably not speaking out loud normally. Yeah, and, and that's I, like I, I like that they were doing that, especially with Prince Robot. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's just it, it the the story just definitely pulled me in, and, and I want to know more. But it's do I have the money to know more? Essentially, and I mean, like you don't have to necessarily do like the the expensive omnibus. Like they have the smaller collections that are cheaper, and I think the the, the what is free on there the first three volumes covers I want to say the first um big collection and then there are two more collections after that that cover the remaining 54 issues. Yeah. And that would, you know, that that would be maybe 30 bucks, 40 bucks with the discount right now. Mhm. Which like isn't bad and again like I I 100% think that a book like Saga is worth it because it is such a well done and compelling story and mm-hmm. it just gets better cuz they do introduce different characters with different motives in it. Um, there are more characters that die and more characters that you think die, but maybe they don't. Um, there are some time skips, so you actually do get to see Hazel sort of grow up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think by the time the book ended for its most recent hiatus, she was like five-ish. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, she could walk around and talk and interact with things and kind of like understand what was going on around her. Yeah. Um, you, we also haven't really gotten to some of like the the fun characters. Like uh, in the last issue, there is that weird sort of like I can't remember what he's supposed to be. Like some sort of like walrus prairie dog combination yeah. that has like a big walrus with him. That's Gus. Gus is great. Um, he ends up becoming like a character in the book for a while. He, just his whole he had like what four four lines and just he made me laugh the entire time. Yeah. He only likes the lady folk. Are you a lady folk? He likes the lady folk to bring oh. him <laughs> bottles. He mm-hmm. better mm-hmm. bring him bottles. It's just like, yeah. this guy's so stupid. I I love it. Yeah, like um, they, that book is so good at just like unique characters. Like, yeah, um, Isabel, the the ghost girl, yeah. the babysitter. 
Um, like she's great because she just gives zero fucks. She just wanted to be off of her planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I want to know more about the stalk. I am so mad about the stalk and that she was killed off. Pretty much the issue she was uh, incorporated. So I won't say that they get into like her a ton, but there are some flash flashbacks with the will about her later on. Yeah, and and I'm I'm liking the will storyline at the moment where like. Pretty much, he's just he just wants revenge for the stalk. Um, but he also went and saved that little girl because he wasn't okay with a six year old being in the sex trade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he he's he seems to be like he's 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 just a bounty hunter, but he's a good guy. Um, but I don't know the the little uh, line of dialogue that you got from Hazel when you first meet the Will uh, makes you think he's he's gonna turn and be a dick. I mean, to be fair, like, he's already kind of a dick. Like, his in- like he wants to... A, he wants to kill Marco and Alana because that's what he's being paid to do. And then he also wants to kill Prince Robot for killing the stalk. Which, like, as dumb as this sounds, but, like, I mean, if I were in the world, I'd think differently. But as a reader, being objective, I don't hate him for what he wants to do because he's... That's his job. He's being paid to kill these people. He doesn't know who they are. He's be- he's doing his job of being a bounty hunter. You don't hate Boba Fett for cap. Well, actually, you probably do hate Boba Fett for capturing and freezing Han Solo. Like that's just his job. You hate you hate uh Job of the Hut for for holding the bounty. Hunters. Yeah, I mean you're you're not wrong. Um, and I guess we didn't really t- touch on what the the actual story is here. Um, so Saga is a love story. <laughs> um. <laughs> It's about two two people from opposing sides of a conflict that fall in love and have a baby. Um, because this conflict, like Richie said at the beginning, is just ageless. It's just been going on forever. No one even remembers why it's happening. And the level of race tension between these two species or societies, whatever you want to say, is so high that they're both they're both viewed as both war criminals and traitors, and their daughter is viewed as like an abomination. Um so both sides want to kill Alana and Marco, and they want to get the baby so they can study it and find out, like, what it actually is. Because up to this point, it seems like nobody even knew that somebody from Wreath and somebody from Landfall could um, procreate. Um, it, it's cool, though, because if you – also with, like, the, the different characters, you have your your Wreath is a moon of Landfall. Yeah. And on Wreath, they have magic, and it seems like a little more – old fashioned like they they fight with swords and magic and stuff like that whereas on landfall they're they have guns and they they don't have magic and they seem a little more technological versus fantasy yeah yeah um but the the story is basically marco and alana with their daughter hazel as a as a newborn baby she literally she is born in the first like three pages of the first issue um basically on the run and trying to find a place to to live peacefully and kind of coming across different characters throughout this journey. Some of them want to kill them. Some of them befriend them. Some of them are, are, are these big blue hairless cats that can tell if you're lying and will tell you if you're lying. Mm-hmm. Some of them is a giant ogre with his uh, penis and scrotum hanging. Oh, man, that is <laughs> such a fucking page, right? That was... Sure uh, so I think there were three dicks in the two volumes. Uh, but that was... That dick made it be one too many dicks. The other ones were just fine, but that dick, I was like, all right, I didn't need that. And you see that one a couple of times and from different angles. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this book is 100% like not safe for work or children or anything like that. I mean, yeah. the stalk, like you mentioned, is a giant spider lady that with no arms and no shirt. Yeah. Like, like she she has the, the, the mostly human torso and then like the bottom half of, is just giant spider. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... It's it's a wild story, and then you have Isabel, who's literally a teenager that's missing her bottom half because yeah. she she stepped on a landmine or something like that. I think. Uh, yeah, she stepped on a landmine. Um, and it, it's just it, it her her backstory is so sad because it's like she's just on uh, Cleave, the planet they start on, is just like that's just where the fight is now for no reason. That's just where the armies ended up being, and she dies because she steps on a landmine left by one of the sides in this war that has nothing to do with this planet. Yeah, it's... And there are a couple other characters with, like, some pretty tragic stories 
Um, if not like backstories, then like their story as the, as the book continues becomes more and more tragic. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to remember at, at a certain point, um, thing like it never becomes like an action book. There, there are scenes like when Marco fights those, um, soldiers on the cliff that have a little bit of action, but it is always more yeah. of like, like a, like a drama, like things are playing out and they're, they're trying to avoid conflict because it's two of them and a small child. Um, even when they have other people with them, like it's never like they can afford or have the, they're never prepared to go up against an army, basically. Yeah. Um, I will say that I do like, but also hate the fact that in Marco's um, flashbacks, it didn't translate his language. Yeah, and they always do that. They never translate the language that they speak on Wreath. It's yeah. always just that that blue kind of slightly like fantasy font. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I wish they would have kept it like the blue cyan color, but gave us what he, what they were saying or translated it. I I like that they didn't do it, but at the same time, like I mean, it doesn't. It's not really that important. It's just him telling him like. I don't know, get get back on and try again type of shit. But like, I I do wish I knew what they said. Which I I definitely understand that. Like, so books do that occasionally where they'll they'll have content that they just they purposely don't let you know what it's being said. And sometimes it's in an actual language that you could theoretically like type it into Google Translate and find out what they're saying. Uh, but like in this case, it's a made up language. Like, there's no way to know what they're actually saying. Yeah. Um, and it looks like, so right now, if you were to, um, want to buy these, the, um, the big deluxe one that just has all 54 issues would be $40. And then the individual, like, um, like deluxe paper, like trades that have, I think, I think it's like two or three of the normal trades put together are $26 each. So it would actually be cheaper to just buy the full compendium that has all 54 issues. It's probably even cheaper for me to just go to Eric and be like, hey, let me read something. I think Eric stopped buying them before they finished. Uh, whatever. Well, he's a jerk. Yeah, because um, Eric, Eric stopped buying comics at, like, probably midway through. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, he, he might not have passed where um where you can get with the unlimited plan. I could uh, always I could always dig out the issues and let you borrow them, too. Yeah. I do uh, actually I, have all of them. <laughs> I, I will say... With the, when you meet Marco's dad, um, and he's, he has dialogue, for some reason, my brain put his, uh, put the, uh, uh, his voice as Fred Willard. I get that. I I I 100% get that. It's, it's probably mostly because he plays Phil's dad in Modern Family. Um, oh, that's right. I always forget about that. Yeah, but it's like, when he started talking, I just for, my brain was just like Fred Willard. This is how he talks, and I'm like, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Yeah, yeah. No, that that works. See, for some for whatever reason, like with comics, unless it's a comic that I started reading after like a movie or something happened. So like in a lot of cases with Iron Man, I do kind of read his stuff in like a Robert Downey Jr. sort of fashion, just because I didn't really read anything with Iron Man in it until after I had seen those movies. Yeah. Uh, but like for this, I just, I don't have that like association with any actor, but that's actually a really good association. Yeah. And that's, that's how it, like when I'm reading stuff, it, even if comics or books, if there's like, if I'm reading a Batman book, like when I read that Batman novel at the beginning of the pandemic, like I went to a normal, like a uh, Batman, the animated series voice for Batman slash Bruce. Um, yeah, and you know what? That's fair. Like it, it, for Batman, a lot depending on like what sort of book it is, I will a lot of times in my head like like I will be thinking of it as um as the animated series. Yeah, but then there's just there's certain characters where like depending on what I'm watching or listening to. So because I've been watching Modern Family and Fred Willard is in it, like that's the voice that I gave him. The freaking uh the, the the Gus. He got what my voice, what I think my voice sounds like when I'm listening to Brose. And uh, the main <laughs> character, the main character is what I think my voice sounds like when I'm just talking to myself. So Marco? Which, uh, Marco, yeah. Marco sounds like me, but what I think me sounds like. And uh, Gus sounds like me, what I think I sound like from listening to Brose. Which are two different voices which, in my head. That's, I mean, that's valid. It's it's goofy, but it's valid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... What are both of your, like, like, what did you both like the most from the, the 12 issues? Could be a moment, could be a theme, could be a character. Uh, I don't know. 
I mean, just overall the story, really. Like that's what kept me going. That's valid. Um, I would, I would definitely say the art. The art was, was, was like, I mean, it was all really good. It was all really well done. But I just really liked looking at the art. Um, that's why I was so taken aback with the fucking ogre. It was just like <laughs> I was sitting there staring at it for like ten. No, I, I don't know why I'm miming that I'm holding a book out in front of my face when I was looking at it on my computer screen. But, like, I'm just sitting there staring at it because I'm just looking at this art. I'm like, man, that's so, oh, God, disgusting, but that's so beautiful the entire time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, that is that is valid. That's 100% valid. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the artwork for, like, Fiona Staples' artwork on that is yeah. um, just absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and then I'd, I'd also just have to go, like, the lore and background is what makes me mostly like i want to know more about i want to know more about everything else like i I, it kind of like in like my my complaints with star wars is i i'm tired of the skywalker saga and the skywalker era i want to know more that's like i like this story and i want to know more about the story but i also just want to know more about everything yeah yeah and it's a shame like because i mean like i said before it's been like three years since an issue came out but because it's just a monthly comic this has never been one of those books that gets like a bunch of weird like offshoots and and one offs and stuff like that to expand mm-hmm. on other characters and such. And I believe the last time Brian K. Vaughn like talked about the book like prior to announcing it was coming back, he basically said that like the next like when it does come back, it's going to be the the second half of of it. So it, it it's going to wrap up in this half, and it's going to be about the same amount of issues. So it'll be another like fifty to fifty five issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're looking at like one hundred and ten issues of this book altogether. And there is just a ton of other stuff that, like, you want to know about. Um, you like know, for, 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 like, an independent comic like this, like The Walking Dead, 100 issues, that's the perfect one. Like, I wouldn't want it to go much beyond 100 issues. Yeah, it, it definitely varies by series, too. Like, there is another book, um, it's called Wayward. Uh, Rich, actually, I think the first couple of volumes are on Comicsology Unlimited, and I think you would really enjoy it. It's, um, it's sort of a cool take on both, um, Japanese and Asian, like, lore and mythology, as well as, like, Celtic Irish lore and mythology. Um, but it's set in, like, present day Tokyo. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's called Wayward. It's only 30 issues. And it works, like, it could have easily gone longer and still been a good book. But because it's just that, like, constrained 30 issues, it, it gets in, it gets the job done, it gives you enough to, like, understand the world and enjoy it. And doesn't overstay its welcome or, like, drag things out longer than it needs to. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Was there anything you guys especially didn't like about Saga, though? No. Yeah, no. Well, that's good. See, I wasn't sure because neither of you guys are comic readers. So, there, you know, there's always that chance. It's like, eh, I just don't like comic books. It, it, it was boring. I, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I mean, my whole thing with comics is there's, there's just too much. That's why I don't watch comics. Well, that's why I don't watch uh, uh, One Piece. That's why I don't really read comics. This is, there's just too much. It's funny though. Like for One Piece, seems perfect for you because you like you like those comfort shows. So that mm. that show is so long, you'll never have to rewatch it. It just keeps going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, you can watch fucking one episode a day, and you wouldn't be through it in four years. Uh, it's in, well, you at this point you wouldn't get through. You'd get through it in four years, but who knows how much longer it's gonna go. Um... I, I, I do want to watch One Piece. I hear it's really good, but I also hear the first couple of seasons are rough because it's that early animation style. I, uh, it, yeah, I mean, we are like 20 episodes in right now, mm-hmm. and it's not a bad show, but it's also not a, like, especially with the um the English dub from, like, the mid-2000s. Yeah. Like, between the dub and the animation, it's not great yet, but I've heard so many good things about it that I'm, like, willing to, like give it till, like, it gets to a more modern era and sort of, like, gets its feet underneath of it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other questions that I had for you guys about Saga. Oh, were there any, like, um, w- was there anything that you were just taken aback by, like, like the giant ogre with the flopping dick? Other than the giant ogre with the flopping dick. Because that, uh, that, that book has a lot of, like, shock moments where you turn the page and all of a sudden there's, like, naked people or giant ogres with dicks flying around. It's it's turning the page and seeing uh seeing the blowjob on King Robot the first <laughs> uh, screen. Yep. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, that that happens quite like not a lot, but there are quite a few times where like 
so he eventually actually gets injured too and gets like a crack on his um screen. And after that, like he gets some weird shit flashing on his his screen. It's it's mm-hmm. very fucking weird. And a lot of times, if I remember correctly, it's very like it, it's not related to what's going on necessarily, yeah. which makes it even weirder. But like in a very like fun way. Yeah. Um, and like there there are some other of those just like shocker moments as 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 it goes on too, where it's I like that, that whole scene was just insane with like him being knocked out. And, and like it's all flashback. It's it's him dreaming and him being knocked out, and then the the rat lady coming and and healing him, and then the and the mist coming, and it just destroys. It blows her up. Yeah, yeah, and, and like that's like, one of those like it's sad too. <laughs> yeah, because that character was just talking about like what they wanted to do with their lives, and then it's just like, nope, you're dead. Yeah, and, and it's it, it 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 at that moment makes you pick a side because you're like, yo, fuck. Fuck these, the Moonies. Fuck the, the, the people from, from, from Reef. Like, they just killed this lady for no reason. That just wanted to live her life. But then, when she's explaining, like, oh, they don't give us gas masks. It's like, yo, fuck, fuck Landfall for not actually supplying their medics with what they need. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, it, it kind of sucks all around. And, like, that's war. Like, yeah. they, they, they give gas masks to the soldiers because they need the soldiers on the front line. And it's like, well, sorry that we don't have enough to go around. Ho- yeah. Hopefully your species doesn't get uh, affected by this. Yeah. And that is never the case. Nope. Um, but yeah, so, so uh, the consensus is like, Drew, you're, you're done. You're likely not gonna, gonna continue on. Rich, you may actually continue on a little. Yeah. I might read, uh, volume three, see how that ends and see, um, on another cliffhanger. <laughs> well, on another cliffhanger, but see if like it pushes me to continue reading, which it probably will. Um, uh, but at the like, I'm probably not gonna buy it until at least after Christmas. If anything, I might add it to my Amazon wish list to have somebody buy it for me because Comicsology is owned by Amazon at this point. Or That's I could true. Just get the, I could just get somebody to buy the actual uh, omnibus physical omnibus for me. So keep in mind, the physical omnibus is so big, it's actually not a good time to read. Like, it's actually hard to read the physical one because it's so big. Um, the deluxe paperbacks which are end up being more expensive in the long run are much easier to read because they are like they're just double thick basically of like a regular trade um i would definitely say like because mostly because comics allergy actually reads really well on a phone because you can do that i don't know did either of you guys do the guided view at all i actually went and bought the two volumes oh like the two physical volumes yeah there was zero chance i was going to get through reading it on a phone or a tablet that's fair I mean, good, good on you for buying the two physical ones. I, I was trying to keep it free so that you guys didn't have to spend any money. Uh, it's fair. It was twenty bucks. Like, yeah, no, I mean that's that's actually very cool. Like, I I purposely picked this because it was um it was Comics Allergy Unlimited, so I figured, all right, well, it's free for you guys. Like, you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> so yeah, thank totally. thank you for and, buying it. <laughs> and like, I I had pulled up the Comicsology app and like looked at the screenshots, and I'm like, yeah, no, I'm never. It, I'm never going to be able to do it. So I was just like, let me get the books. And then like, I did wind up reading through the two issues in like a combined two hours. Yeah. Like, and like, they're, they're good enough that you kind of just want to keep reading them. Yeah. Um, I, I read it on my computer. I, uh, I, I, it actually surprisingly worked really well because I was able, you're able to actually have it set up to be both pages. So I didn't do the guide of you. I just had it set up to be both pages, and all you had to do was click the arrow or click or press the arrow key on your uh, keyboard to have it change. And so, like, I, I've talked about this. I need premium conditions in reading. I need no distractions, no noises. or anything. So, like, I set up some reading music. I sat there, and I read. Of course you I, did. Of course I, you set up reading music. That's 100% if I, you. If I don't have reading music, I'm not going to be able to focus. No, I if totally I, understand. Like... Like, even in general, like, if I'm, and this isn't reading music, this is just, if I'm alone, um, and there's no one talking, I need background noise. So it'll be the TV, or it'll be the music, or otherwise I get anxiety. And so even more with, with reading, I need that music to drown out everything else, so I can focus on what what's in front of me. That's, that's valid. Um, what I was gonna say, though, uh, in case either of you guys ever do look into it, um... The Comixology uh, guided view um, actually works really well on computer and on phone. Um, it does this really cool thing where 
if say it's like a splash page or something like that, um, or just like a wider shot, it will zoom in on the area that the text is. And then when you swipe to move to the next screen, it actually zooms it out. So you then get the full view of it. And in some cases, it actually makes it makes a better reveal. So I, I have a screenshot put up on my phone um, near the end of one of the issues where um, it's actually where Alana and Marco first meet when he's a prisoner. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a line. Um, it's one of Isabel's narrations in like that, like scribbled handwriting, which we also didn't talk about. I think that's a really cool thing where like this whole story is kind of like. Isabel telling this story from like somewhere in the future. Mm-hmm. Well, H- Hazel. Ha- yeah, God, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hazel. Um, but there, on the screen, it's written um, in romantic comedies. This is called the meat cute with like quotes yeah. around it. And the, the actual image is of Alana pistol whipping Marco with her, her assault rifle and yeah. saying, I said no talking after he had tried to say something to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way that Comixology played that was it was zoomed in on the dialogue, and then when I zoomed out, it was her knocking his tooth out. Okay. Um, and I think like it does that on in a couple different places, and it just it definitely makes the the book flow differently and just read differently in like a really good way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess all of that said, Rich, what are we doing for the next book club? So, um, although when we talk about it, it's going to be after Halloween. Because Halloween's this week, I wanted to go with kind of maybe a little bit more themed and spoopy. Um, so I was going through Netflix, going through everything, and I saw this uh, Korean film called, um, y- you'll probably know it as like Hashtag Alive, it's only called Alive, uh, but on Netflix it has the hashtag and it's called Alive, where it's about a game streamer gets stuck in his apartment complex during the zombie apocalypse in Korea. Well, doing research for this, because I wanted to find out what it was, what it was about, uh, general ideas of, like, reception, how people liked it. Uh, here's what, um, I'll just read what Wiki says. Um, Alive is a 2020 South Korean zombie film directed by Cho Hyung, uh, starring Yo An and Park Shin Uh, it's based on a 2019 script alone by Matt Naylor, itself becoming another film. In 2020, there was a film released called Alone, which is based on the same exact, which is the script that Alive is, is. Both of these films are an hour and a half long. Would you guys want to watch them both and then compare them and talk about them? I'm up for that. Like, it's, it's, it's what, three hours? About three hours. You can get one done this weekend, one done next weekend. Um, I will let you know that, uh, the Alone film, because there's two films that came out that are on, uh, Prime Video called Alone, um, both in 2020. The Alone, uh, when you are searching for the O, is the biohazard sign. Like the, 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 the all the, uh, half circles or quarter circles, whatever. Um, and, uh, one of this, it stars, um, Tyler Posey and Donald Sutherland. So it's, oh, got, a shit. Big, it's got a, got a big name in it. Um, Drew, are you cool with, with watching two movies and talking about them? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's fine. I'm just going to have zero time to watch them for the next week and a half. Right. Cause when do you leave? Tuesday. But, the second? Yeah. And when do you get back? I get back Thursday, but like not till the evening. And then you like, have other I shit have, to do over the weekend. I have shit to do. I have to work again on Friday and then I have shit on Sunday. So you have to, to travel do. for work and then work the day you get back or the day after you get back, I should say? Kind of. They're not super like expecting us to really be working like they want us to like be checking our emails but like kind of it okay so i mean that's not as bad then yeah um well i guess do you think you'd have three hours to watch these two movies by the 10th or would it be better if we if we bump this out one more week to the 17th i would say probably bump it out to the 17th that or it, it's that or Honestly, like, if you guys just want to do it for the next one, then I see if I can get it in, but I don't, I don't well, know. If, if you can't watch them both, just watch, watch, um, Alive. Watch the Korean one. If you can't watch both of them in two weeks, just watch Alive. And don't watch Alone. Because that's what I more wanted to talk about was Alive. So if we can't do both, just do Alive. Okay. All right. Cool. That works. Um, yeah, because, like, I understand, like, when you're traveling and then coming back and, like, having other shit to do, like... You don't necessarily have time to watch movies. Though, I mean, hey, maybe you'll be in your hotel room with nothing to do and you can just throw one of these movies on. <laughs> uh, no, they've got so much stuff planned and also, like... Oh, really? 
also it's Nashville. Like I don't. Oh, that's right. You're going to Nashville. Fucking spending time in my hotel room. <laughs> like there are literally there's literally a street with like 50 bars with live music happening all the time. I'm fucking going listening to music. Fuck. Yeah, no, I mean that that Fuck is the, that's the right room. move. <laughs> that's 100 percent the right movie. move. Especially me, like sit in a hotel room and watch movie or listen to music. <laughs> yeah, like, no, that's that's the right move. But yeah, so so we will aim for at the very least a live on November 10th, which would be yes. the the episode would go live on the 11th. Um, I definitely have like I have nothing really going on, so I will definitely watch both of them just to see what it's like. Drew, if you happen to have the time and and can fit in both of them, cool. If not, no big deal. You don't care about spoilers, so if Richie and I spend 10 minutes comparing them, it's not like it's going to bother you. Oh, yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> You'll be like, oh, that's what they were trying to do. Okay. <laughs> Look, legitimately, I, spoilers make me more interested in something. <laughs> like, it, at least, like, scripted shit. Like, that's fair. Uh, it it makes me know whether or not things seem worth investing my time and or money in. Like, I mean, that that's a valid way to look at it. Like, I can't say it's not. I, I mean, I would... I'm not 100% for that statement, but I'm also not against it. It depends on the spoiler and and the effect. Like, uh, Cobb, did you finish um, Squid Games? Yes. Uh, so we'll, we'll get real quick into the spoiler I heard from that when you said, or don't care. Um, the, hurt, the spoiler I heard was, the old man was behind it the whole time. Oh. But, and so, like, that kind of took me out of it because I knew that he basically wasn't going to die. Um... But it didn't really play a main thing, so it was a kind of a bummer that, like, oh, I knew, like, this was kind of his plan or whatever. But at the same time, when, like, he didn't do anything else until the very end, it was just like, well, this is kind of bullshit. Like, and this would have been a better reveal to not have known it than to have known it, in a way. Yeah, no, I, that one, because that does kind of, like... For for a show like Squid Game, knowing that somebody's behind it and knowing that they're not going, so that like that ruins the suspense of will they live or not? Yeah, uh, because like you know the main guy is going to survive. It's everybody else that you kind of have that you're wondering. It's yeah. like oh, like are, is this other person going to make it or is everyone going to die? Yeah. Um, so knowing that it's like even if they pretend that somebody dies, they didn't really die. It's like oh mm-hmm. well, that's a bummer. Yeah, fair. Uh, but yeah, we can uh, move forward. Uh, make sure to watch at least Alive in two weeks. Not Alive and Alone. Yeah, and we will uh, we'll obviously have reminders over the next next episodes for that. Yeah. Uh, but next up, Rich, you and I finished uh, Metroid. Uh, I don't. We, we spent a ton of time on Metroid already, so I don't want to like spend another forty minutes. But what did you think of the ending? I thought it was good. Um, that the 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 worst part of the ending is. Uh, to get to the final boss, you have to go up an elevator. Every um, fucking time. Yeah, so every time <laughs> you die, you have to go up an elevator, and it asks you if you want to go up the elevator, because you're going to the end of the game, so they don't want you to like, go and then go by accident. Um, It took me... So I I played it on Monday, and I got to uh, Raven Beak, or to the final boss, um, at quarter after ten, and I didn't beat the game until about 11.30. So it took me upwards of an hour to boil down how to kill Ravenbeak and to actually do it. If you had to guess, how many tries do you think it took you to get through the third phase? The third. So I would say the third phase um, would have been probably a good five tries, five or six. Well, we talked a little bit like like that day before I finished it, um, which I think was yesterday. Yesterday during the day, we, we talked a little bit about it. Yeah, I had gotten up to Ravenbeak on like Saturday, I want to say. And I hadn't uh-huh. played since then. So I hadn't played, so I played on Saturday, I didn't play in, again until yesterday. Yeah. I had only gotten to the second phase where he's flying like one or two times at that point. And I had only tried maybe four or five times total. Yeah. Um, I, had, I hadn't gotten the first phase down to where I was getting into the second phase with, with like a good amount of health left. And then in the second phase, he's just a giant dick the whole time. Yeah, the second uh, phase is absolutely the worst of the three. Like, the, like the third phase is the hardest, but the second phase is the worst. So I will tell you, the third phase was the easiest for me. I did it on the first try. Really? Uh, yeah. So once I got the first, from the moment I I started playing yesterday, no issues on phase one. Got through it every time. Um, by the time I got to phase two, every time I was back to full health because even if I took a little bit of damage, 
um, you get enough health from him between shooting the uh, the black orbs and then just yeah. countering him that mm-hmm. like you normally have full missiles and full health when you, if you if you're dodging well yeah when you get into phase two and actually you actually helped me a little bit by um, mentioning that the missiles are more powerful if you don't shoot them as the the storm missiles yeah like if you don't lock on and shoot like the three or four at a time. Um, yeah. I didn't real. I never noticed that. So I was aiming at those black balls and hitting them with the storm missile, and it doesn't destroy them. You still have to hit it with like three more missiles. So Whereas the storm missile, the storm missile, you need five lock ons to kill the black ball or four regular. Missiles. Exactly. Once when you said that, and I hit the thing with four regular missiles, and it was done. I'm like, fuck. This just changed everything because now yeah. that was the thing that was hitting me the most. Because I either I was either getting hit by that. Or spending too much time trying to take it out, where I was then getting hit by something Raven Beak did. Once yeah. that was out of the way, I was not getting hit by him at all. A few times I just timed things poorly when it came to um when he does the big thing overhead that does everything but oh. the cone next to him. I just wasn't yeah. getting close to him quick enough. My my problem when he does the uh, I was calling that the uh, Star Wars Luke Skywalker. Is you know how Luke holds his the lightsaber up? That that's what I was yeah. calling that whenever yeah. he would do it. Uh, whenever he would do the Luke Skywalker, I would need to use two dashes to get to him. And so by the time that's done and I had to run away, I could only use one dash, and he would always hit me after I dashed away. So I started, um, I stopped dash, I tried to stop dashing as much as I was, because that was what was getting me. I was dashing too much and then not having it when I needed it. So I actually started, when he does the overhead thing, as soon as it starts to go away, I was space jumping over him. Yeah. Like so, I was like jumping away from him and up, so that when he when he does his hit to the left or the right, whichever side I was on, I'm just above him already. Yeah. Um. But when you get into the second phase, um, I could not avoid the fucking machine gun fire, like consistently. The mach- the the second phase is the worst because he's always in the air. However, I was a- I'm able to get through the second phase practically flawless. Like. That the avoiding the machine gun fire is easy because you stay around him and you circle him. So that was my problem. I couldn't get, I couldn't get my space jumping like quick enough to get ahead of that to then get around him and then like be and also have flash steps to like keep myself like ahead of it. I'd inevitably like I'd, I'd miss like a um the timing and I would like fall too much and then just be right in line with it again. Or I would try to flash step too early and would actually flash step into him instead of over him. I I would not flash step when he was shooting the machine gun. That was the only way I managed to avoid it eventually. And it was really just there at one point I I had one good run. I got past that second phase. I am completely confident had I not beaten the third phase on, on the first go, it would have taken me another probably dozen times on that second yeah. phase. But I tried very quickly when when I saw him put the the big red orb up. Um, I immediately dropped a power bomb because I figured it was it was high enough in the air. I'm like, it's going to take a ton of missiles. What if I just power bomb this? If you power bomb it, instantly kills it, gives you a bunch of health and ammo if you need it. I didn't even think to fucking hit it. Yeah, like I was just like, oh, this is now a bullet hell. Which like immediately was like, okay, dodge the laser and dodge the things that it's shooting after. That's fine. But then he would break fucking sequence, and he would shoot the fireball, and then jump at me and try to hit me melee a bunch of times. And I'm like, this is the worst part. The fireball was the worst. Yeah, I got I got hit once in in the third phase because I I um I missed uh, the cue for the um for the counter. Like when he comes when when he dashes at you, I missed it, and he actually hit me and like ba- and shot me into the wall. But then, like, the, the very next move was the red fireball, so I dropped another power bomb. Uh, luckily, he, luckily, you actually get power bomb ammo from that, too, or from yeah. countering him. So I never ran out of power bomb ammo. I, I always had pretty much full health, and I was able to, uh, to take him out on, in that third run really, really well. Um, yeah. But, like, the first and third phase, flawless. The second phase can go fuck itself. <laughs> For, first, first and second phase is flawless. Third phase was, now that I know that I could power bomb the, the, the fireball, I could probably do it a lot better. The thing that took me multiple tries, like, I think, what did I say, like, five, six, maybe seven tries, was the fact that, and this is the worst part, you have to kill him with a quick time event. You can't just kill him. Like, it has to do that quick time, and there was a couple of times in, like, my, like, second to last fight that I was able to activate that event twice. 
my last fight with him, I had 13 health left. Because Holy I did, shit. I did the QTE twice, and he hit me both times. The third time, I just calmed it down, and he, I was able to, 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 to hit it out of him, and won. You actually, yeah. you saved me on that one too, because you mentioned while we were talking that there, there's a QTE to, to, to finish it. So I was kind of like, like I was waiting for like that cutscene thing to happen because like, by that point in the game, you know when they're doing that cutscene because you fought in so many Chozo warriors that have to be defeated that way. Yeah. That it's like, as soon as it went to that sort of perspective, I'm like, okay, where's yeah. the flash? And I just, I hit it as soon as I saw the, the flash. The thing that threw me off is in phase one, the flash is very forgiving. Yeah, it is. And that's why I was off. Cause like when, when you see the flash, you don't have as much time in phase three. So I was hitting it early. And oh, it was just like, okay. It was, it was, I would hit it, then it would flash. Like, I was hitting it just early. Which is kind of what, that uh, that happened to me a lot with the Emmys. Like, I, yeah. I had that happen a lot with the Emmys. Which I will say, that, just to, to, to rewind a little bit, two, two quick things. That last Emmy fight was great, because you just fucking end it immediately. Like, Samus yeah. just, like, grabs the thing, sucks its energy out, and it's just like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, that was, it, it, it's such a good game. I'm probably gonna go back to it and play it some more. Um in the near future, maybe try hard mode. I'm not sure. And then, did you manage to get through the the escape without any problem? Oh, yeah, the escape was easy. I finished I it with I had five like, seconds. I think I had, like, 40 seconds left. So I fucked up. I couldn't figure out where to go when it first transitioned into it. I thought I had to shoot, like, the walls, and it wasn't doing anything. Mm-hmm. It took me a minute to realize I had to space jump up, um, yeah. and it was just long enough that, like, literally, I it hit five seconds as it cut to the, um, like, the ending cutscene for me. Yeah, I... Um, I'd have to actually go back to my stream and see how much time I had. But I feel like I had more than that. But at the same time, I did the same thing you did. But I kind of knew I had to go up. I just wanted to check the walls anyway. Ah, okay. I wasted more time than I should have. And I think there was, like, one or two other times where I did, like, something stupid like that. Like, I tried to go one way, and it took me a minute to realize I had to go a different way. Um, but that last suit that you, that you wear for like the, the very end of the game and like the, and your, your powered up blaster, that was very cool. Yeah, the Metroid suit. Yeah. Um, I don't want to give away like, like what the ending is for anyone listening, but it's, it's a very cool ending for a Metroid game. And I do hope they make another 2D Metroid game. Yeah. They, they, they definitely, should. this game sold so well. There's no reason why they wouldn't, uh, make, make another 2D. Drew, are you still kind of like, on the fence about whether you actually want to get it or not? Yeah, I actually started playing Super Metroid a little bit. Like, literally maybe like an hour today. I don't know that I like how that game fucking plays at all. So Super Metroid and Metroid Dread do play very differently. I will tell you that much. That's good. Um, Metroid Probably. Dread definitely has a more... Um, the the combat feels better in Metroid Dread. Because um, like, Super Metroid is very much like a... you. You're more meant to avoid combat and sort of, like, take the hits and just get through the area. Um, Metroid Dread is much more like, oh, no, like, counter everything and kill them because they're going to refill all of your things. And other than the double jump, I still think is very bad. Like, like the double jump is too precise for, like, what it wants you to do. All of the other movement feels really good in that game. The wall jumping, um, occasionally, the for especially for a 2D analog stick platformer, like, it it moves really, really well. Yeah, the the, the uh, Super Metroid is is rough. It's definitely rough. Um, it's a game of its time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I um, I I think you would like this. Um, the controls are a lot smoother than in Super Metroid. You definitely is a lot much more of a smoother game and transition. Yeah, some of the control choices that they make with like what buttons do what are just they're annoying. But you definitely do get that muscle memory for them easily mm-hmm. enough that, like, it becomes a non-issue after a very short amount of time. It's just, like, as you get a new power, it's like, oh, well, that's a stupid way to do that. And then 15 minutes later, it's just second nature. You're just hitting the button the yeah. way you need to. Yeah. Um, the thing I hated the most was I, uh, y- y- you get the super bombs last. And at that point, I had already gone through the entire map and gotten all the super bomb up bomb upgrades. So I had nine super bombs before I even got this fucking super bomb. I had I had like two or three of the upgrades before I got to the end there. So yeah, like that was, and I knew because at that point I had n- nothing else to upgrade, and it's just like you can't use this yet. Yeah, I'm like, and, okay, cool, it's super bombs. 
And I had spent a majority of the night, like, going back through areas because, like, I knew I was getting close to the end and I just couldn't quite figure out where to go or what I had, where I had to go to. Um, so I was like, let me just get everything that I missed and maybe stumble my way to where the path I need to go to. And I'll, most of the things I missed are either, um, Shine Spar challenges, which those things are hard as fuck. Yeah, they are. Or Super Bombs. And so I'm like, I, Super Bombs aren't going back. After getting the super bomb, going back through the entire game, when I have one little tiny area left to go to, it's not worth going back and getting these two, these four missiles, missile upgrades that I'm missing. Out. Yeah, especially like you definitely don't need them. I, I actually watched a video yesterday after I finished it. Um, somebody beat Ravenbeak with um, no health and no missile upgrades. So just mm-hmm. base everything. So what yeah. is it like 10 missiles and 99 health? That's all they had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and after the first phase where you have to use missiles because nothing else hurts him, um, they only use the, the regular blaster. I, well, they, it was the, the wave beam blaster because you have to get that upgrade. Yeah. But they didn't use any more missiles after that. Mm-hmm. And like the shit they were doing to avoid the, um, the, the machine gun in phase two, they were used, they were going in ball form and using the, um, the cross bomb. Okay. So they'd like, they'd like, Drop the they they jump drop the bomb and then jump again and it would like boost them over and they would just like keep their momentum going to like boost over Ravenbeak in the ball form to avoid the machine gun. I'm like fuck you for being being that good at timing that. I mean they I feel like that's a harder way to avoid the fucking la- the machine gun than what I did. But okay, that's I mean your it choice. it might be, but they were doing it without using any um really any upgrades like like the the cross bomb was the the most advanced upgrade they used they didn't flash step at all they didn't space jump at all oh they probably did they not have them i guess no no you uh, you have to have those things in order to to complete the game they just didn't use them that's why they were doing the bomb thing because they weren't space jumping that's silly yeah it was it was they, like it was basically a challenge for themselves but they did it and it was just like dude they did that qu- they they did that whole fight quicker than i did it on my best run yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, have yeah. y'all seen what the speed run time is down to an, on that game? An hour no. and twenty eight minutes, I believe. Uh, it's down to an hour twenty three. Okay. Yeah, I knew. I knew they had hit ninety minutes a couple of like like last week or whatever. Yeah, there was there was already sequence breaks the day it came out. Yeah, I actually kind of want to like I might go back at some point and replay it and try and do some of like the sequence breaks to get like the bomb earlier so that I can do that um goofy shit with uh with Creed. Yeah. I I want to I I I want to be able to be good enough to do the 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 shine spark against the second to last boss. Oh, against experiment whatever number yeah. that thing was. Yeah. That's, yeah, that that's would That's crazy. I would like to do that too cuz that that timing has to be so specific cuz you have to get through the um the flappy bird stuff and then while the air is still blowing hit a shine spark into him. Yeah, you have to get through the the Flappy Bird stuff without taking damage, depending on when you actually start to activate your 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 dash. Because I watched a video, like you can jump while still dashing before doing the Shine Spark or something. It's timing is so weird. Yeah, so there there is actually enough wind after the last Flappy Bird section that you could build up the the Shine Spark before it ends, and then you can do a Shine Spark on an angle. So yeah. if like your timing is perfect, you hit your dash right when the last thing comes through. You build it up, store it, and then right as it like resets, um, hit him at an angle with it, or or right above him if if yeah. if he's in the middle. And apparently that will end the fight if you if you can hit that, which is really fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, um, but, yeah, but anything else you want to say about Metroid? It's, it's a good game. I I wish I could play it for the first time again. <laughs> it's I, I'd highly suggest anybody get it, whether you're a fan of Metroids or not. Like it's it's a fun game. Like. I'm bad at platformers, and there was a decent amount of platforming in that game, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, and so, Drew, d- do you like the Souls games? I've only played Bloodborne, and I didn't hate it, but I didn't really get that far into it. Okay, well, I, I know you like roguelikes, and yes. I I know, like, two things that people often get out of, like, a roguelike or, like, the, the Souls games is that, like, sense of accomplishment when, like, you get past the section that, like, you've been stuck on for a while, like... And, like I've said before, like, I don't get that. Like, when I've tried, like, Bloodborne or Demon Souls before, I don't feel good when I, like, figure out the, the boss pattern 
and like beat it. And I'm like, oh, cool, I got through this. Great. Um, because we're talking about it with uh, Ken and Bridge of Spirits, where the bosses are very like souls borny, and that I just I don't enjoy that. Um, totally different experience with Metroid. Like every time, like I I finally managed to figure out like the pattern for a boss or um get the Emmy taken down after like escaping from them a bunch. Like it just felt like a huge accomplishment. Cool. Yeah, I don't, like I'm interested. I'm not spending sixty dollars on it. Yeah, I mean that's fair. Like for a game that like you don't have like a history of enjoying, um, it'd be different if like you'd played like Super Metroid and Fusion and all that, and yeah. like been like, oh man, I've been waiting twenty years for a new one of these. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, but I guess we'll we'll move on now to uh, I watched Dune, the new one, the one that just came out uh this past weekend. Yeah. So I didn't. I knew very little about Dune other than like it was a planet. F- of desert, basically. Knew nothing yeah. else about it. Didn't know it involved drugs that made people... They gave people superpowers and also let them travel through space. I mean, that's that's more than what I knew as well. Like, like I knew desert, and, or I know desert and spice. That's it. That's all I know of Dune. Actually, I, did, I forgot. I knew spice. So spice, the drug, gives people superpowers, but also is how they travel through space. Didn't really get like a like a deep dive onto how that's possible, but that's that's what they explained in the movie. Um, that said, it was a very good movie. So, is this a remake or is it like its own thing in the universe? What, what, so, what is it? I guess theoretically, it's a remake because there is the the nineteen eighties Dune, but this it, it, it they are both based off of the nineteen sixty five novel Dune. So, like this is less of a, like a remake of the movie and more of just a new ad- adaptation of the book. Okay. Um, it's about, it's actually only about the first half of the book, too. So it's unfortunately one of those movies where it's kind of long. It's two and a half hours. It does not feel like two and a half hours, though. It definitely moves quick enough. And, like, there are so many good actors and, like, it's not like a big action-y movie. Like, it's just a lot of character stuff. And it just, it's very well done. And it looks really good and it sounds really good. Yeah. Um, but it is two and a half hours and it doesn't really have an ending because it's only the first half of the book. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. You kind of have to go, like, I didn't know that going in until we were getting near the end, and we're like, there's no way they can wrap this up. There are too many, like, things going on to even, like, half wrap any of them up. Yeah. And that's when I looked and I saw that it's only the first half of the book, and they actually just um, greenlit a sequel, like, yesterday. So even, nice. like, yeah, so even before the movie came out, there was no guarantee we would get the sequel. <laughs> um, It is on HBO Max, though, so if you have HBO, HBO Max, it's available for 30 days from... This past Friday. Um, or it's in theaters. I'd say, like, if you like science fiction and, like, heavy science fiction, it's definitely worth checking out. Because it's got... It's very dense up front. But, like, as the movie goes on, a bunch of things start clicking. And you're like, oh, this world is way more interesting than I realized. Mm-hmm. And not just the, the planet that they're on, but, like, the, the whole world, like, the, the universe that this stuff takes place in. Yeah. And it's just... It's, it's got a hell of a cast. I mean, um, the, funny enough, the... The director made a comment a few weeks ago about um, something about, like, like his feelings on, like, comic book movies. And, like, he basically he doesn't like them. Like, more than half of, like, the main characters in this movie are from fucking comic book movies. Or, or like, other, like, large um, franchises. Because, like, Oscar Isaacs is in it. He was both in an X-Men movie and Star Wars movies. Um, yeah. Jason Momoa is in it. Um, uh fuck what's his name the guy that played cable and thanos i can't think of his name uh, why is why is his name not in my head right now? yeah i can't think of his name but he's in it like it's just a, a whole bunch Roland. of yes yeah, thank you that's it. just a whole bunch of people where you're just like well he's from a comic book movie and she's from a comic book movie <laughs> is batista in dune but, yes that's right so, ba- so, batista's in it too i'm looking at the cast right now you got zendaya yep you got josh brolin and you got uh david uh dast Mocklin. Yeah, because he he was just um, polka dot man in the Suicide Squad. Also, um, Skarsgård. I forget what I forget his first name. Stellan. Um, Stellan Skarsgård. I was gonna say Alexander, but that's his son who was in True Blood. Um, Stellan Skarsgård is um he was the the doctor from Thor one and two and the first Avengers. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason I mentioned those three is because I mean Zendaya is MJ. Josh Brolin is. Uh, uh, Thanos and David Dasmoklin is in the Ant Man movie. He's the the Russian. Oh, rat. holy shit! I forgot he was in there. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's, so that's, that's that's funny. That's yeah, that's like pretty cool. A lot of people from the fucking MCU are all in it, but it mm-hmm. it is really well done. Like it's a fun. It, I don't want to say it's a fun movie because there's not like a lot of like funness to it, but it's really well done. The characters are interesting. I'm super interested in just the world now because there's so much stuff that's just it's it's left vague because it's only half of the the story. Mm-hmm. Um, but if if you guys are looking for like kind of a heavy science fiction movie, um, like check it out while it's still on HBO Max. Like it's definitely worth watching. Yeah, I di- I didn't even know it came out. I I definitely will check it out when I have the chance. Uh, things are getting pretty busy over this weekend. Maybe sometime over the week next week. Yeah, it it's good. You, I saw some people online that they're like, I watched it over like two or three settings just because it is such a long movie. But definitely, definitely worth the time. Yeah. And then I guess the last thing we have to talk about is uh, Critical Role started their third campaign on Thursday, right? Last Thursday. Yeah, last Thursday. It was finally fucking Thursday last. Um, yeah, I and it's this. We don't have to go too in depth about it, but uh, Cobb, this was your app, actually your first time watching Critical Role, or like sitting down and watching. You might have like seen bits here or there or whatever. So I, I watched. Like, I I did watch the first maybe ten ish sessions from campaign two, mm-hmm. but it was when they were already like fifty sessions in. So oh, it was yeah, just so you watched the first ten from when they came back from the pandemic. No, 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 like, I mean, the, the original first 10 of Campaign 2. I watched the beginning of Campaign 2, but it was, they were already up to, like, episode 50. So, like, oh, okay. it was just, it was so much to try and catch up on that I'm just like, I can't do this. These are too yeah. long. I'm never going to catch up to this. I'll just wait, and I'll come back to it some other time. And it just, it worked out that they announced Campaign 3, and that they also announced it would be, um they'd be taking those Fridays off every month. Or those starting, Thursdays off every month? Uh, starting in 2022, February 2022, they'll be taking uh, one Friday off a month, I believe is what they said. That just gives that extra week where it's like, if I am behind, I have an extra week that I can I can catch up on, on, a, yeah. on a session or two. Yeah. And, um, Jordan, I'm not did you watch it at all? Did you check anything out for it? I, I didn't. Um, it was good. Uh, the one thing I hate is that the community is so uh, toxic with EXU. It's Andrea Unlimited. Uh, they hated the fact that there's three EXU characters in this campaign. Oh, are all three of them playing their characters from that? I thought it was just yeah. Robbie. No, Robbie, Robbie, Ashley, and Liam are all playing their characters from EXU. Uh, and uh, Mercer tweeted out about it. They, uh, with with Ashley and with Liam, they were that that was their running idea for what they wanted to be for campaign three. When EXU came up, they decided to roll with that to play test them and see how they would like those characters. So that's why, like, in a way, it's not they took the characters from EXU, it's they took the characters from Campaign 3 and played them in EXU first. Okay. Uh, but there, there's just, there's, it, the community seems to be very toxic about EXU. They didn't like it because it was very different than how Mercer DMs. Um, and it was kind of a hot mess in times, but that's just based on the characters themselves, um, and not, like, anything against uh, Abrea or or any of the cast. Uh, it's just the, the characters they were playing were kind of hot messes. So, like, I can understand the not really being into EXU, but people were, oh, this is the worst thing ever, this is horrible, this is terrible. Someone even said that uh, they hate the fact that they're using EXU characters because then that makes Campaign 1 canon, and they hated Campaign 1. Which is like, if you hated Campaign 1, why are you watching Yeah, yeah how Critical did you Role? stick through? Like, yeah, like, like that's... Because isn't Campaign 1 generally, like, the one that people like the most? Uh, I mean, well, there's only two campaigns, so it's really hard to tell, but it's like, it's the original, it's the first. So, well, that's what I mean, like, people like, seem way more attached to the Campaign 1 than Campaign 2. Yeah, probably. Um, like, I, it's hard to say, like, there's not a lot of stuff coming out about Campaign 2 right now, like, but we also, there was... Uh, uh, six or seven levels of sessions that we didn't get to experience in campaign one because they, they it was the home game that they turned into the live game. Oh, right. Uh, so, like, that's why there's a lot of, like, behind the scenes for campaign one. But the, the characters were great. The, the cast was great in campaign one. The cast was great in campaign two. It's just, it's different, different strokes. Same as with, um, campaign three. Like, these characters are much different, but I, I didn't hear as much complaining about Travis's character as I did 
about the EXU characters, and Travis's character is an, also a rehash from a previous campaign. Oh, okay. See, I really like Travis's, like, the fact that he showed up so, <coughs> excuse me, so late, and he's just like, I'm like an 80-year-old man, yeah. um, and he just kept making jokes about it, like, falling asleep early, like, when when they all had to meet up, and it was supposed to be, like, first first light, and he's yeah. just like, oh, look, you, finally, you guys finally made it. I'm on my third bowl of grape nuts. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a fan theory that this isn't going to be his final character, and I can kind of agree with that, because this character is level 5, whereas everyone else is level 3. I noticed that, I because Erica and I actually watched it last night, and I'm like, it's weird that his character says it's 5, but everybody else is 3. Yeah, and it's, it's when we last saw Bertrand Bell, he was level 18, um, and that was 25 years prior, so, like, He's a fighter, so obviously the older you get, the more frail you're going to get. So it makes sense to de level him. Um, but I just, it, it, I don't think they're going to stick with Bertrand as a full time character. I, I mean, Travis is CEO of Critical Role. What if maybe he can't make it to every session? Or what if CEO stuff takes precedence? Like, that's probably why he's playing a, that, this little bit of a different character. And it's also maybe why it seems that Robbie is. A full time cast member, which I I like Robbie Damon like yeah, and throughout that whole episode, like he just had this he had this level of just excitement. It seemed mm-hmm. like anytime something was going on, he just seemed so excited to be there and be part of it that it, it was like kind of infectious. Well, yeah, and the whole the whole cast was just having the giggles. Oh yeah, it, yeah, like a hundred percent. They've they spent the last year plus playing at separate tables away from each other that like finally be able to be right next to each other. Um, is just, it's, it's such a different feeling to be able to like when you're playing D and D online and playing D and D in person or playing D and D social distanced while, but still in person and playing at the same table, it's like such a different feeling. And like, they were all just happy to be there to be able to play. Like these people definitely love their job and, yeah. and it shows. Yeah. I know. It's funny that people don't like those characters, um, just because Liam didn't really get to do a whole lot in this, in this episode. But, like, Ashley's character was fantastic. Like, mm. she was hilarious the whole time. Yeah. Um, like, I think one of the first things she did was pickpocket somebody. Yeah. And, and like, successfully I, to the point where Matt's just like, oh, son of a bitch. I, I think, um, one of the reasons that I think people might not like the EXU characters is that they're a little bit more morally ambiguous. Like, they don't necessarily... They're not necessarily good guys, but they're not bad either. They just... They, they, they do their own thing. But generally, in Critical Role so far, they've played good... Good... Like, more good-leaning characters. Not necessarily... Somewhere on the, on the lawful or neutral side versus, uh, like... Somewhere on the good side versus the neutral side, but more if they're neutral, they're like lawful neutral or yeah something, and not like the like Ashley. She's playing a chaotic character, and it's it's going to be so fun. Like she's going to cause problems, and it's going to be great, and it's going to create a great dynamic. But I'm I'm so interested to see what kind of story Matt has planned for this first arc to get the characters involved with each other, and it's just it was a good show, and uh. We can't talk about episode one without talking about uh, Sam's ad. Just Sam in general. He he is just yeah. a fucking delight of a human being. He's 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 like a super troll. He's a delight. He is he is a uh, uh, what's the word? He's 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 a god. Um, so true. H- have you ever watched Critical Role? I watched like a few minutes here and there when Sarah was watching the EXU stuff. So okay, that's, that's all I've seen. All right, so at the beginning of of their streams, they kind of each have, like, a little, like, bit of business that they have to, like, go over. Like, whether it's, like, merchandise or, like, announcements or whatnot. Uh, Sam Sam does advertisements, and he reads an advertisement, and he just kind of reads it straight. And then, like, Matt's just like, is that it? Is that really it? And Sam just goes, of course not. I, I, wrote, I wrote a musical about this ad that the the client didn't ask for and hasn't seen. And then, like, he scurries away from his seat and it cuts to him, to, like, his pre-filmed musical. And it's just the dumbest, funniest thing. Because it's, it's just, it's like a Broadway musical. It's him and, and a lady, I don't, I don't know who the lady was, um, uh, singing, uh, Mary, singing about Mary, ads. Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. 
Um, I'll I'll give you her voice uh, credits in a second. But yeah, it was just it was fantastic. And then he is playing it like a robot. Um, I don't know if that if there's like a, a specific thing for those in D anD D, but he's a robot. Oh, uh, what is he a warforged? No, I I probably, but uh, the, he's he's not playing a normal kind of warforged. He's okay. like an, he's he's like gnome sized. Uh, he's oh. rolling around on wheels like an automaton. Uh, so automaton was the word he kept using. Yeah, yeah, that's the word he was using. But at um, one point during during the thing. They're just sitting there, like, minding their own business. He reaches down and pulls out a gas can that's, like, kind of decorated and made to look old and stuff like that. And then he hangs a, sa- a sign on it, like a like a chalkboard sign, that just says, I've got gas, and starts drinking out of this, like, full-size gas can to the point where just everybody cracks. And, like, Matt's at, at like, the DM side just and just literally goes, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, just completely, like, taken aback by, like, the fact that he just pulled this thing out of nowhere. And, like, the t- side of the table that he was on could not see the sign. So the other side of the table is all laughing because they can read it. And then when he turns it so everyone else can see it, that side of the table then loses it. And it's just, yeah, that that guy is just chaotic in the best way. Yeah. Um. So Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, she is a voice actor. She, um, she directed their, uh, their animated series. She voice directed their animated series. She played a couple of characters in Campaign 1. Or not a couple, a character in Campaign 1 for a couple of a session. Um, in the English voice acting, she played, uh, she voice acted uh, Zebi Maru from Bleach, uh, Renji's um, Swords um, Soul. Oh, okay. Let's see, um, trying to see what else like you might know her from. She was Julia in the original Cowboy Bebop. Okay. Okay, so she's she's been doing it for a while. Yeah, she's been doing it for a long time. She's she's a director primarily, but she still does voices from time. Yeah, it's always funny to like go and look up like that cast and see everything they've done cuz like obviously like Laura Bailey's in just fucking everything. Um like you really can't find a game or an anime that she hasn't like that you have to go try and find things she hasn't been in versus like what she has been in. Yeah. But like when you look up some of the other people like they've been in some really big stuff and you just might not realize like that they voice specific characters. Yeah. Like, I mean, fuck, like, Travis was Roy Mustang in both versions of Full Metal Alchemist. Yep, and the games. He he tells a story, I think they did a, 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 a between the, sh- well, they did do a between the sheets with him, and he tells a story about, uh, and it might have been on this between the sheets, it might have just been on a random interview, how awkward it was for him to play the Full Metal video game, because there was a sequence where you fight Mustang, and he kept losing against himself. <laughs> and his roommates would come and was like, "What the fuck are you doing? Why? Why are you yelling like that?" It's like, "It's not me. I promise. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm fighting myself." Uh, That's actually pretty funny. Yeah. Um. Let's see. But one thing I wanted to say about Sam's ad is, um, I'm gonna send you a a a, a link to the uh the 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 uh, the wiki fandom that um it's called the Nordverse. It's an entire universal saga that he made about hackers because of NordVPN. Um, if you, I, I'll try to find a video that has it all comp- compiled together, but it's just, it's a, it's a running ridiculous sequence that he just goes off the, off the wall. For. So just like every, every episode, like he'd have like more of a story in the ad. Any, yeah. Anytime Nord sponsored an episode, he would, he creates this expansion to the Nordverse. <laughs> and it like it starts off as just stupid hackers, but then it becomes this like big epic thing where Mercer is the super evil hacker trying to uh I I I don't know. It's ridiculous. But like this is why they have this is why Sam is head of advertising presumably at at Critical Role is because he writes ridiculous stuff like this and then writes an entire musical without the uh consent of the sponsor yeah no like that he he, that guy is very creative and talented like they're all very talented but like because he i also saw the the video from a while ago where he he wrote like the theme song i guess that they're using for the animated series that um Uh, that ashley and laura sing yeah well no the the song that uh ashley and laura sang was uh for their theme song for the past campaign for campaign two oh okay Uh, and it was it was he uh him I think it was him and his brother-in-law 
uh, because his brother-in-law is a uh, like a composer and a writer, a, a, a songwriter. Uh, and I think his brother-in-law helped write the theme song for um, the the Legends of Fox Machina as well. Sam might have had help in it, but I don't know if Laura and and Ashley sang Legends of Vox Machina. I know they sang uh, Your Turn to Rule. Okay, yeah, because I know there is, there is a like a six minute video on like the behind the behind the scenes of that where like he is talking about um like how he literally went into like his like home recording booth and like just like made the sounds for the way he thought the song should sound like like yeah. musically. Yeah, that that would be for Your Turn to Rule, but. Anything else you want to say about Critical Role? Uh, no, I'm I'm happy they're back, and um, I can't wait to see more of these characters. Laudna is my favorite so far, um, and I get this. There's there's a meme that goes out. It's a, a lot on TikTok where it's like it's it's uh, a woman walking down the street, and she it's her filming herself, and she says, um, "Using my scary dog privileges to walk alone," and behind her is like this heavy metal goth chick or whatever. And that's definitely Imogen and Laudna right there. Yeah, no, that 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 fits. Yeah, and it's and, they're, they're going to be great characters together. Yeah, and just they they just they all have such good chemistry and just get so into it that it's just even when they are just kind of sitting there like kind of like talking about like normal stuff, it's all just super entertaining because they are kind of leaning into it and they'll do like the like I don't know what the stuff is like the perception rolls or whatever it is where like. Matt will then tell them if, like, somebody is just full of shit or not. And just, everyone rolls so bad sometimes that he's just like, eh, maybe it's true. Who knows? And then when they roll good, he's just like, oh, shit. Like, (laughs) now what do I say? (laughs) Yeah. Or I I forget what happened. Um, Somebody made a bad pun, though. And he just immediately chimed in with, and then out of... Outside, you you hear somebody with like a French horn, like tuning it, and you just hear. Yeah. Womp, womp. It was they they got done fighting a bunch of animated objects, and one of them was a carpet. And Liam, as um Orum walks over, sees the carpet on the ground all tattered. And it's like it really put the room together. And then you right, hear, womp, womp, womp. or uh, it when, really tied the room together. I think is what uh, he said. Yeah. Uh. So, Druton, real quick, and this will be the last thing I have to say about it, and then we can probably wrap up. Uh, for Sam's character, and I know we're talking about him a lot, but it's a great character. But for his character, what you need to picture right now is, um, uh, have you ever watched 30 Rock? No. No. Okay. Uh, what is the actor's name? Uh, one second. You, you'll know the actor, uh, Jack McBriar. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, what's it? Um, he's Fix It Felix. Yeah. Yes. Fix It Felix. Pretty much Jack McBriar, whatever you would suspect Jack McBriar the kindest, nicest, most, like, uh, uh, sweetest guy around. Um, but it's Jack McBriar as a robot whose name is Fresh Cut Grass. <laughs> that, it is a very good name. And, like, whenever he tells it to somebody new and the look that they give is just great. Yeah. Um, and so, because he's a robot, he doesn't eat food. He eats metal and stuff. And at one point he's talking about, um, how, like, sometimes it gets caught up because he doesn't have a butthole, so he doesn't actually poop, produce waste through there. He's more like an owl, so he'll eat a rock that has metal in it, but it'll get caught in him, and he'll start to throw it up, and he starts making the cat gagging noises, like when they have a hairball. And, like, like the, the facial motions, too, of, yeah, like, trying to, yeah. like, hack something up. Yeah. Uh, Matt had to shut that down quick. And so he chimes in as the bartender in the bar that they're in. It's like, if you keep making those noises, I'm going to have to kick you out myself. And they're like, all right, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Because there were like three of them that were all kind of like recoiling from that because like they must be like sympathetic pukers where like that, that makes them then feel like they have to do it. Yeah. So I know Matt and Liam were both sort of like cringing from it. Oh, I was cringing. No, it's gross. I was cringing too. Like, and, and then, uh, uh, it's just great that, um, that Marisha Ray is having some spooky fun at Travis's expense. Uh, yeah. Tra- Travis's biggest fear is the ring girl, and that's pretty much Laudna, but as an adult. Oh, I didn't, I didn't catch that. Cause I, I knew Travis is, is not the, um, the best when it comes to horror. He, he hates horror. He hates scary things. He hates spooky things. Uh, anytime it comes across in game that something's like kind of scary, he even plays his characters as they're afraid of scary stuff. Uh, but like, if you ever mention the ring girl around him, he's just like, no, 
No, don't. Just don't. No, just don't. That is his like, <laughs> biggest fear. That's actually kind of funny. But yeah, I, I guess that will be a show for this week. Yeah. Yeah. Richie announced uh, in two weeks we'll be watching the movies Alive on Netflix and probably Alone on Prime Video. And the Alone has a biohazard sign in the O because there's more than one of them. They're yeah. both from 2020, though. We also just released today a, a short little trailer for uh, bonus action that's going to go up on Monday, November 1st, the first session. Um, if you'd like to get that either early or just as one big MP3, uh, go to patreon.com slash one quest. Uh, at the $5 tier, we're going to release those episodes early. And at the $10 tier, you just get the full session in, at one, at, in one big MP3. Uh, but otherwise, if you would like to find more of our content, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. And like I said before, you can always help us by supporting us at patreon.com slash one quest. If you can't support it there with dollars, though, you can go to your favorite podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, all those fun places. Rate us, review us, subscribe to us. Those things all help a whole bunch. You can also find us on social media. It's facebook.com slash one quest online or at one underscore quest on Twitter and Instagram. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com slash one quest video. And you can always send us an email to social at one dash quest.com. And then uh, Drew and I, and I, I assume you, Rich, will be at PAX Unplugged in December. Uh, yeah, I'm planning on getting Saturday tickets as long as they're not sold out already. They, I, I actually just bought um, a pass for Erica yesterday, and they were not. So good. So yeah, I'll probably be. There. I'll be there at least on Saturday. Cool. Um, if you want to do two days, you might as well just buy the three day pass. It ends up being cheaper. Uh, but yeah. Otherwise, uh, we'll be back next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. See ya. Bye.